Between February 1692 and May 1693, more than 200 people were accused of witchcraft in Salem, Massachusetts. By the end of the Salem witch trials, the Massachusetts Bay Colony had executed 14 women, five men, and two dogs. My name is Blair. And I'm Carly. This is Girl Historians. The Salem Witch Files. Ahoy! Welcome back to Girl Historians. I'm Carly. And I'm Blair. And this is the comedy podcast where we talk about all things history and we're girls. We're girls and we're doing the Salem Witch Trials and this is one of the, we're winding down the season now I feel like. Yeah, I want to say penultimate even though it's not just because I love that word. (laughs) It's the pen pen ultimate. Yeah, we're getting, pen pal ultimate. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're we're getting there. So very soon we'll have news about what's coming next, but not yet. So we're pretty excited. Um, but yeah, this is going to be a fun episode. I'm excited. Should we say what we're talking about before we talk about our oh, lives? Oh yeah, I guess We're talking so. about the aftermath and the execution. So we'll, we're basically finishing up our deep dive into the narrative. The Salem Witch Trials today, we're talking about the executions, period, and then Done. how the Salem Witch Trials ended. Yeah, which I'm excited to know because no one talks about that. No, they're just like, and then it it's over. They always make the Salem Witch Trials sound like they went on for like years and years and years, but they really went on for like a year. Yeah, Basically like a, 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 a rainy season. Yeah, they did a Seasons of Love with- Exactly. 525,600 witches. Whoa. Okay, love that. Whoa. There weren't though. There was only a couple. There, there were only a couple. That's what Jonathan Larson doesn't want you to know. Exactly. And that he has Mar fans. <laughs> I think he really wanted people to know that he had Mar fans. I think he wanted to know that he had Mar fans. <laughs> I think someone should have, a doctor should have listened to him. Exactly. He got womaned by, he med- got by medical woman <laughs> professionals. And then died before Rent opened on Broadway. Oh. Aww. So how was your week, Rest Blair? In <laughs> Rest in peace, Jonathan Larson. <laughs> Larson. That's a real Mandela effect. I feel like everyone thinks that Jonathan, Jonathan Larson died of AIDS. But no, yeah. it was from a stroke because he had undiagnosed Marfans. Yeah, he didn't die of AIDS. He didn't even have AIDS at all. <laughs> no. That we, that we know of. Because he was straight. He's Mark. Yep. Not to say the straight, straight people couldn't get AIDS, but you know what I mean? But I think a lot, wow. of, people, but a lot of people think that he I'm was I'm not get- saying straight people can't get AIDS. Don't anyway, worry. Don't worry. You because- guys can still get AIDS. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that yes. a lot of people think that he was a gay man who died from AIDS. No, and he, he was, was a straight he man was who died from Mar fans. Yeah, he was Roger and Rent because Ex- Roger one song. He's probably, I feel like he was Mark. I feel like oh, that's the self insert. I feel like that's the self insert of Mark. Okay, you that can makes only, way more sense actually. <laughs> you can only write a character like Mark if it's like a self insert Y N situation of like <laughs> they are the main character and they are annoying. I love that they gave Mark in Rent a tiny scarf. I thought that was a really inspired no, choice. No, I was literally just going to say inspired choice. Inspired choice. A skinny to scarf. A skinny little scarf. Because I just got a bike. That's my big update. So I'm very excited. Okay. Right. Ri- riding a bike for the first lot, time. How does this... Okay, I have okay. a connection. It's gonna connect to tiny okay, scarves. Here's my connection. I got a bike recently, and my biggest thing is like I'm terrified to wear my bag on the bike because what if it gets tangled? And they have Mark on this bike in the movie wearing the skinny little scarf, and I'm like, well, that's bravery because it's your scarf get could get tangled up in the chains, in the chains, yeah, in the chains, yeah. the gears. And he so goes he's flying. Like, How do you document real life when real life's life more, more, more like fiction each, each day. day? I love Jonathan Larson lyrics because they all sound like parodies of Jonathan Larson lyrics like <laughs> they are so it's the same thing with Hamilton of like it is so its own thing that it's yes. like in there's that one line in Tick Tick Boom where he's like um why do we follow leaders that never lead or whatever and you're like oh okay, god okay. no even like you're singing happy birthday you, you just, just want, want to, to lay down, down and cry down. yeah like it's just it's girl like, damn that's great that's so real yeah that's so, so real how was your week you got a bike uh, my week was shit yeah I Honestly, it was, it was bad. You no, went to Montreal. I did go to Montreal. I went to Montreal Sketchfest. Shout out Montreal. Shout out Montreal. Montreal, best city in the world. So many hills. <laughs> oh my God, it's epic. I love it there. All I, everyone smokes cigarettes in Montreal. It's crazy. I know. It's epic. Like, it was so funny. The first night we were there, um, there were like probably like 30 people in this bar where we were doing the show. And then every single person bar two people went outside to smoke cigarettes and it was Brendan my comedy partner and then this other girl who was there Ellie um who came for a night and then like they were like standing at the bar alone and everyone else went outside and had like I shit you not like four to six cigarettes each Jesus like it wasn't like a cigarette it was like it was a chain I'm about to smoke half a pack and then come back in like nothing happened. That's wild. And it was very funny because Brendan and I were like, you know, it's so crazy. Everyone smokes cigarettes here. But like no one smells like cigarettes the way they do in Toronto. 
And then like we both took a shower. We were like, oh, we also just smelled like no. You got used cigarettes. to cigarettes. Yeah, you got yeah, you got used to the smell. Everyone smells like cigarettes yeah. in Montreal. But Montreal's awesome, and it's like it's one of those places where like everything's just like a bit cheaper than Toronto. So you end up spending so much more money because you think you're in some sort of like money saving heaven. Well, did you not tell me that you? are eating crow because you got a coffee and it took you 45 minutes oh, to get a coffee. Yes. <laughs> I think on this podcast, I, I ripped into Carly because she was like, in Montreal, it, they take forever with the coffees. I want my coffee Yeah, you're quick in like a go. second cup. Like it's not like, it's one thing if you're in an independent cafe. Yes. And there's one barista and there's a line. Yes. I get that. You know what I mean? 100%. I'm not against the service industry, but I was in like, it wasn't a second cup, but it was a chain the last time I was in Montreal. Yes. And... It literally, I was, it was me and one other person. And when I tell you it took them 45 minutes to make two drip coffees, like it was oh, insane. Yeah. No, I waited 25 minutes. I ordered an iced coffee. And to be fair, my French is like pretty, I can understand, for, I can read it really well and I can yeah. hear it pretty good. But like, I don't have any confidence speaking it. I think that's very Canadian because you read so much yes. of it. Because I feel the same. Like I can get by reading French for sure because yes. you have to read it because it's on every street sign and everything. Yeah. So you just kind of get to know like common words and yeah. whatever. Um, but like I can't, I don't have the confidence to speak it. So I ordered an iced coffee and then 25 minutes later, I got a full latte for here. <laughs> and I only knew it was mine because I had also ordered a cookie. Here's your latte for here, and there by are these, the way. And there are these two men, like, speaking in French, being like, est que tu la, la biscuit? Like, and being like, did you get this biscuit? Is this your is this your cookie or not? And I was yeah. like, oh, I think that's mine. So I guess I'll take my latte for yeah, here. Yeah, and then I had to drink this, like, and it was fully, like, 100% milk. Oh. I just drank a cup of milk, and I was like, it's just I... just why, like, <laughs> nothing but love and light to Montreal. Like, I could not live there. And I love people from Montreal, and I think it's a great vibe. Yes. But, like, it truly just goes against every single your impulse ethos. I have. No, it's yeah. like, I want to be... A Montreal girly, but I can't. Yes. I went to PEI and I love P I love Charlottetown. Mm -hmm. And I when I was in Charlottetown, I was like, this is how people feel in Montreal. <laughs> Where I'm like in a different world, I'm here and I'm fucking thriving. Yes. I'm yeah. thriving in this vibe. Absolutely. This but in Montreal, I'm just like too stressed because everyone's dressed too nice and everything takes too long. Mm -hmm. And everyone's destroying their body. <laughs> And everyone's so mean. Like if I, if you're an English speaker in Montreal, they're so fucking mean to you. Yeah, they just don't care about you. I went to get bagels and that was the one time I ordered in French and the, because the guy refused and I respect it. You know what I mean? Like this guy was <laughs> I don't. Like, I, I, well, I respect him just being like, he works in this tourist attraction of that. Like he's probably <laughs> yeah, worked at in 50 I'm years. Saying. I'm like, it's a tourist attraction. <laughs> You speak English. That was the one time I ordered in French because I was like, I can't have this guy thinking less of me. So I was like, cease. <laughs> <laughs> Bonjour. Bonjour. Je voudrais six bagels, s'il vous plaît. Merci. Mosque, uh, le cash. <laughs> Just <saying>. Credit. <laughs> Credit. When Reese visa. and I went to Quebec City for like one of our anniversaries, I don't, I can't speak French. Like I could read Quebec it. Quebec City's worse. Quebec City is like super actually, because this is what I'm saying again. Yeah. Like I have nothing but respect for different languages. In Montreal, like it's a bilingual city. Mm -hmm. But the more you go into Quebec or New Brunswick and you get to like, more like rural. the French French. They are French cities. Like, yeah, absolutely. And if somebody's speaking French there, I'm not like, why? I'm like, well, you speak French. But when yes. people in Montreal are like, no, I'm like, girl. Especially when you hear someone. It's a coffee there. time. Like you're the, 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 yeah. the title is in English, babe. You well, speak it's also it. Just like when, sometimes you'll hear French in Montreal that is like fully just kind of like English with an accent. Yes. Because there's just so much overlap. And it's not like Parisian French. You know what I mean? It is not French French. It is no. its own. It's, got, it's like bonjour. That's what coffee. I'm saying. <laughs> and like, they okay. don't, yeah, they like use English words and they say it in a French yeah. accent where they're like, your, where are your skis? Yeah. And they're like, that's French, Uber. by the way. I'm like, girl, <laughs> no. Also, there's a whole thing. It's not their fault. It's like the government has made it so that all public schools are, all, are incredibly French, but then every yes. single private school is bilingual. So every rich kid is, can speak French that's and crazy. English. It's a whole thing. That's but insane. we went to Quebec City and I cannot speak French. So Reese, like, yeah. it was literally like I was like a victim and he was carting me around. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I was like a, an immigrant mother who had come to a new country who couldn't co communicate with anyone else. And my husband had to like order groceries. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like I had, they'd be like, what do you want? And I'd be like, speak for me, please. Him? But I always remember like, Reese was like, I've got this, like he did uh, French immersion school, all this stuff. And we were at like a liquor store and they asked him a question and he didn't really understand it. So he just went, the? <laughs> And then the guy switched, switched to English immediately because he was like, well, the's not a word. <laughs> like, the doesn't, isn't anything. The. The? The. And they're like, okay, so you're English because what the fuck is the? I do feel really cunty when I go, Dakar. <laughs> 
d'accord, bitch. Ouais. Ouais. <laughs> ouais. Ça va? Yeah. Ça va? I do think if I spoke more French, it, I would feel more. I know. I always wanted to. There's a program in Canada where, like, you can just kind of, like, go and live in, like, a French village and they pay for it. Oh, and no. I was like, that would be a fun Why experience. Why the fuck do they pay for it? Because it's like for more people to learn French or something. I don't okay, really, do I'm that. misrepresenting this program. I know, I'm like, let's <laughs> fucking do that, first of all. I think it's for teenagers, Carly. But oh, So fuck. if you're a Canadian teen, look up free French city program. I don't know what you'd look up. Just figure it out. It's something. Work it's, the keywords until you get there. Yeah, it's like birthright for Canadians that I know, I was literally French. thinking yeah. that. Uh, but it's a small which obviously we can't get into the politics of it. Bad, <laughs> bad Israel is bad <laughs> for what they're doing right now. Birthright is a great marketing idea. Oh yeah, you get huge. a free trip by the way. You get a free trip. Free you get to vacay. go on a plane with everyone you went to like day camp with, and it's a vac. It's a vacation. It's huge. Awesome. The Broad City episode of when yes, they where the to guy go dies, right? Is so funny. Doesn't the guy die in between them when they think he's dead? He's dead. Or yeah, something? Yeah. yeah, yeah. They think he's. dead. I love Broad City. Oh my god, I put off finishing Broad City for so long because I knew I'd be depressed, and then I finally did, and then I was depressed for like three months. Yeah, it's a hard season like series to end too because the characters don't really change as much. Like something like the office or parks and rec like the characters go through such changes that yeah. it like feels really satisfying when it ends where something like broad city or girls or whatever where like the characters are kind of stuck in time yeah same with sex in the city or whatever you're like it feels like we could just keep this going like you know what i mean yeah. like it doesn't feel like things have changed so much did you watch the end of broad city i did it's just like okay pause this part if you don't want broad city spoilers but basically they just kind of like realize that they won't be hanging out as much anymore ever again in their life and it's fucking devastating yeah it's just sad it's so sad it's and then like they like zoom out on all these like groups of like two friends walking around <laughs> and i was like this that is, sucks this is rough yeah definitely this is so sad you want to talk about something else yeah let's talk about something else you want to talk about the kendrick lamar drake oh yeah <laughs> oh god okay let's get into it kendrick versus drake let's go i will say as a torontonian also <laughs> yesterday i literally spent like such a crazy amount of time analyzing both of their birth charts oh my god okay kendrick what has moons? cancer and mars which is just okay, like yeah. oh you're Makes fucked sense. like Makes the sense. second yeah, family done. gets involved you're here let me read this to you okay so I saved, I saved that I was talking with a friend about every single one of them because Kendrick is a, um, a Gemini and Drake is a Scor Scorpio. Yes. So we knew how this was going to end immediately. Like there's just truly no way a Scorpio <laughs> goes up against a Gemini. Well, because Gemini's, Gemini's are, are so, fucking crazy. And, and they're like and the I mouthy love them. ones. They're and the like, mouthy ones. Let me say, I think Gemini's get a bad rap. I love Gemini's. I love Gemini's They're so too. insane in the favorite way that I, that they, my favorite way that people can be insane of like mm -hmm. they're mouthy and wild and like, smart and witty but bitchy like yeah. i love gemini's. gemini's rock i have beef with scorpios <laughs> <laughs> and we know this <laughs> i've got fucking beef with scorpios my ex-girlfriend is a scorpio i have like two crazy friendship breakups both with scorpios i have fucking um, beef with yeah. scorpios i've said and this before, i have scorpio but, moon like yeah. that's why it's too intense for me no this is the thing scorpios like i love Scor like as a taurus love a scorpio but like i've never had just, like a normal relationship no. with a Scorpio. Okay. So what, what do you, so you want to know their moons? Yeah. Kendrick's moon is Pisces. Okay. And Drake's insane. moon is Cancer. Insane. Okay. In, so two incredibly sensitive men, first no, of all. No, exactly. Drake's chart is actually crazy. It's sun in Scorpio, moon in Cancer. He's got Mercury and Venus in Scorpio, Jupiter and Pisces. Like it's all water and emotional. That's nuts. That makes sense. That really checks out His for Drake. His ascendant is rising, right? Yeah. Ascendant. That's Leo, which also <laughs> fucking. Okay. Uh, anybody who's rising as Leo fucking sweats when they drive past the middle school <laughs> oh my god I'm kidding I'm kidding I'm kidding I'm kidding I'm kidding I'm kidding I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> not really leave that shit in I'm gonna ask you in a day or two how you feel about keeping that uh, leave that in leave that's fucking hilarious leave it in that was good okay so and Kendrick is sun Gemini moon Pisces um, Mercury Cancer Venus Gemini Mars Cancer uh, his ascendant his ascendant is Libra Oh my God, like me. Yeah, he's got a lot of his Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune are all in retrograde. Oh, and his Pluto are oh. all in retrograde. Like there's a lot of retrograde in his chart. Anyways, I was, I was analyzing this because <laughs> it just truly makes sense. I will say, mm -hmm. I, am, I had a friend who, named Creo who I worked with at CBC, who I love dearly. And he once said, because he's a rapper, um, that the only rappers that white people who don't listen to rap love are Kendrick Lamar and Eminem. And I do love Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> like, <laughs> he read me yes. to filth and he yeah. was correct. Mm -hmm. I love Kendrick. Like, love Kendrick. So there wasn't really, like, already, like, I'm coming into this incredibly biased. Yes. Like, I love the artistry of it. 
Pulitzer Prize winning love Kendrick. Yes. Um, and Drake, if you live in Toronto, is public enemy number one. Yeah, Drake like, occupies this very interesting like <laughs> spot in Toronto culture where everyone hates him, but like you kind of have to ride for Drake a little bit. Because we need representation. Yeah, because and also just because like he's kind of doing more for Toronto, whether you like it or not, than anyone else in the game right now. It's crazy. And it is so funny, of course, that like the most popular person or like famous person from Toronto is like a rich kid from like Forest Hill or wherever he's yeah. from, who's on Degrassi. Like, <laughs> which is why I think the issue with Drake outside of his it, love for teenage girls which is a big problem I will say just yeah is like he bit. wants to seem like he's from like the hood or whatever like he yeah. wants to seem like gangster or what like he wants to seem hard and he's yeah. not and you don't need to be Drake like this is the other thing the issue with the rap battle is like it's not a rap but you know what I mean like mm -hmm. he's just not that good of a rapper like he makes <laughs> songs that play in the uber and you bump to them in the uber you know what I mean like they're yeah. good pop songs he's like actually like a good like singer or whatever you know what I mean that's the thing I never Really, but he's categorized not a Drake as a rapper. No. I was always like, he's kind of doing this like R and B kind yeah, of like yeah. pop thing, which like, uh, oh my god, 2016 when Drake was dropping like One Dance and Controla, no, that was you, a crazy that's era what I'm to be smoking weed and getting drunk. Like you cannot. It's hard to explain if you do not live in Toronto. Like again, like people do just like ride or die for him. Like if you yeah. go to the club or you're listening to the radio, like because- The power that Nice For What coming on the radio has over me is like- Like you're saying it's one bad. dance is, cr one dance, hotline bling. Yeah. I was running through the six, six with my woes. woes. Like there's just, you know what I mean? Like it just, it plays every, there's a thing on Canadian radio where there needs to be a lot of Canadian content. Yes. So let's, I don't know the exact number you might know. Cause Came you're- on 30%. It's 30%. So 30% of the radio needs to be made by Canadians. Yeah. And this used to be like how you would get like Headley or all these like smaller Canadian <laughs> bands to be Mary on the radio. Mary Trench. <laughs> exactly. But now it's all Drake and Justin Bieber. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the amount that Drake plays on the radio cannot be understated. It's at no. least, I would say it's 20%. <laughs> like it's crazy how much he plays on the radio. Yeah. So he's around all the time. Also being an acting, like I have two friends who are models who awesome. have been in Drake music videos okay. and have described it as the most hellish experience <laughs> of their life. <laughs> and like one of them was like, I'm not doing it ever again. And then she was like, I did it. I did it. I again. did it again. Where it's like, okay, so let me tell you this. So it's, that you go to like Drake's fucking mansion. Mm -hmm. and, On the bridal path. Exactly. The fancy street in Toronto. Exactly. And the shoot like starts at midnight. And this was like basically oh like a 24 God. hour shoot. Like it just kept going and it's like dancing and like partying or whatever. Drake okay. shows up six hours late. So DJ Khaled is there. And I guess like a lot of DJ Khaled music videos, they have like sketches that people do with- it's so they sit down and they draw pictures? No, like a comedy sketch. Oh, they do comedy <laughs> sketches. Oh, the, I was picturing Drake with like a pack of Crayola pencil crayons. Yeah, so Drake really wanted to do a crayon. He, he wanted to do a crayon of the <laughs> drawing of the pretty girls. Okay, yeah. So this one art. was about basically DJ Khaled was like doing a fucking checkup for these girls as a doctor by touching their boobs. Fucking hilarious. Awesome. <laughs> That's fun. I wrote a sketch like that. <laughs> I wrote that sketch. Congratulations. You stole my sketch. Yeah, DJ Khaled stole your sketch, My dude. sketch called Boob Doctor? So um, it was that's <laughs> mine. So it's literally like Drake and DJ Khaled going down this line of girls touching their boobs to decide who had the best boobs to then be touched again that's and stuff like that. Okay, it's, sorry. This is word for word my sketch named Boob, Boob Doctor. Doctor. <laughs> Shit. And like, they like lied and they said that they were going to finish shooting at three, but they just like kept them there because it was in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Yeah. The and like they're like just girls were there. And you also like if you're in Toronto, you like have friends who are like 18 and like yeah. Drake just has people who goes to the club and it's like, do you want to go back to Drake's secret club or like mm -hmm. his bar or do you want to go to Drake's house or whatever? Like just Drake's like fucking employees are like, hey, do you want to party with Drake to like an 18 year old Dude, girl? I'm so glad I'm not a hot 18 no, year old girl happen to who me. goes to clubs. Like, let me say, didn't happen for to me. sure I'd be going to Drake's house. And I then you'd be victimized. No. I'd be victimized. No, exactly. They tell me I have the worst boobs. <laughs> and, and, you then don't they, and, they, and they'd also say we're taking writing credits <laughs> for boob for, doctor. For boob doctor. <laughs> but it's like when Fuck you're in you. Toronto, like it's such a weird relationship with Drake. Yes. That like, I mean, I love him getting just absolutely obliterated what's your take on the beef then um well I, I thought in the beginning it was kind of like oh in the beginning it's like i don't know it was like fun i i think a lot of this stuff is like obviously just for like publicity and whatever yeah and then i think drake um being a scorpio and just being kind of like a nasty rich kid <laughs> um insinuating kendrick hits his wife is a bad like yeah it's bad and then all of a sudden and this is the thing that people this is why i like love gemini's is because I really feel seen where people will wrong me and then not understand that I'm fucking insane. 
Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Where I always want to be like, let's figure this out because like, if you really piss me off, like I'm crazy. Yes. And you yeah. know this to be true about no, me. No, <laughs> 100%. So it's, it was very fun to see in a large scale done much better than I could ever being like Kendrick apparently like calling Drake being like, let's keep the family out of this. Like let's yeah. create rules and then Drake breaking those rules. And then Kendrick like being like, fine, I'll release two of the most banger songs you've ever heard about how yeah. you're a mother. Yeah. And how you've hid a secret daughter <laughs> from the world. Which like, is crazy. Which is crazy. Drake, you simply can't do it twice. Like you it's simply like- cannot do it twice. <laughs> like you can't. Have a child that you refuse to acknowledge yeah. and it comes out in a diss track. So you have to acknowledge this child and be present in this child's life. You can't do that. That's and how I met my dad. Have it happen again. <laughs> but what if he wants to launch a fashion line? <laughs> this is the thing. Like, this is why I feel like I'm a really bad person to discuss this beef with because like every take I hear, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I'm so, yeah. Like I go on my TikTok. I've been on TikTok lately because I've been having a bad week. Yeah, so you're repressing so on, as much I've as possible. On, I've been on TikTok, which makes it so much worse. Yeah. Um, but like I'll see these really interesting takes, which is just sort of like, yeah, these are just like two men fighting like children. And I'm it's like, wild. yeah, that's kind of like really what it is. And um, I saw this really interesting take, and I'm gonna butcher it a little bit, but like I thought they really made a point where it's like Drake is just known to be kind of like a bad, shitty dude. Yeah. And Kendrick, unfortunately, and as a Kendrick fan, I will say it, I'm a Kendrick yeah. stan, Kendrick Lamar girl, yes. but like he is kind of um, manipulating this like moral high ground where people really totally. take what he says to heart. Um, whereas like if Drake comes out and says something, we're like, well, it's Drake. But if Kendrick <laughs> says something- <laughs> We're like, it's true. We're like, it's true. Um, and so when Drake is making like accusations of like domestic violence and then Kendrick isn't saying anything, and we're sort of like, well, like what's the- like, is this, is this true? Like, cause you're not saying anything. Yeah. I think the unfortunate truth is like Kendrick just has, because he doesn't really do interviews and doesn't really like, isn't really public in a no. way that like Drake is public and annoying and corny so and around. shitty. We could find him in 20 minutes. No, exactly. Like uh, 20 minutes tops. If I look up gym near <laughs> where I live, it gives me the OVO athletic center. Like, let's just go there, hang around. Uh, yeah, like him. he'll show up. And he's going to be doing fucking duck face in the mirror. Like, it's just unfortunate that like, and the, the, the mistake that Drake makes is being like, I'm the master manipulator. Yes. Like, I'm going to destroy you when in actuality, it's like, he's not that smart. <laughs> <laughs> Where Kendrick is like, is very calculated and very smart of being like, my songs will be good. And I'm yeah. incredibly mean, which I love. I'm not incredibly saying I- Incredibly mean laugh oh, yeah. at these. Like, they're so mean and so funny. But the mean. one that is, I hate the way that you walk, the way that, that you, you talk, talk, the way that you dress. <laughs> it's like, that's an epic chorus to be like, hmm, how do I really dig into this guy? I'm just going to list off things I hate about yeah, him. Yeah, there's like a so part cool. where he, so cool. in uh, Not Like Us, where he's like, I'm going to beat your ass and hide the Bible if God's watching. <laughs> like, <laughs> or Certified Lover Boy, Certified <laughs> <laughs> like it's crazy I love that song yeah. too again Kendrick fan but I do think that like just because he is seen as like very like artistic mm-hmm. and respectable because he is like an, a proper artist as opposed to like yeah. a pop star who likes being famous he just knows that like people are gonna believe him yes way more than they're gonna believe Drake yeah um and it, and he's doing it in a really good way again Kendrick fan but it's like he is so good at like he's like d- broken Drake's brain, and this is why you know Drake. It's like the Scorpio of it all, of like Kendrick being like, "You're you're hiding a secret daughter, and you're a." Pal. And Drake's like, first of all, I'm not hiding a secret daughter," and you're like, "What about the other stuff?" <laughs> so you're saying that you you are a. Pal. Yeah, and he's like, I, the so it's, it's actually, just like like why why? So him first up. of all, I don't have a secret daughter. End of list. End of list. <laughs> when, like, I'm going to go get lunch. In the heart part six where he's like <laughs> talking and he's like, I'm way too famous to be a pal. I would be behind bars if I would if I did that. And you're like, oh, babe. Like, no, what are you that's fucking That's famously talking about? how you get away f- with being he's a like, pal. You think I could be a pal if I was this famous? And you're like, like yes. yes. Yeah, dude. Like, what? Have you read the news ever in it, your the life? The news ever. Ever. Just and the Apple updates that pop up on your phone, like not like even the news. Famous person is, is like, and we're all kind of just okay with it. No, it's wild. Like it was that whole Roman Polanski thing. Yes. Where the other guy, I forget who the other guy was. Was it you telling me about yes. this? Yes, the guy who was like, "Well, look, if we all were punished for what was happening in the '70s, we'd all be in jail." And, and everyone's so like, like, "Bro, so you just what? said you were." A pe- 
Why would you? <laughs> Bro. Why would you say you're? Why are people pa- a? Second yeah, of all, why are people point. admitting to being pa- B? And why are people saying like, oh, like, well, am I pa- if I do this? It's like, like yeah, babe, Drake. What? We have you on tape being like, oh, I love feeling your breasts up against my body. I wish you weren't like sixteen or whatever. Like, there's a video of him doing that. So, like. I would say- Well, to be I, fair, he was low on cast members for Dr. Boob. Exactly. The sketch. He, <laughs> he, he was casting. He yeah, was he casting. was casting. It was less about boobs. It was more about um, the art. Yeah, it was about the art of it all. He's but trying to like, get on Second City Tour Co. Let's go. <laughs> tour, Drake, get on Tour Co, babe. Get on Tour Co. I but would love like, to see him in a sketch comedy show so in Niagara. He's so messy. Where it's like, he says, first of all, if I had knew a video- of that, and there were several accusations of me and Millie Bobby Brown, and me and Billie Eilish, and me being a creep. I would simply never get in beef. I would be unproblematic. I'd be so nice and everything. Do you know what I mean? Because I'd be like, the second this rug pulls out from under me, because what we've learned from famous people is if you're problematic, but people like you, nobody gives a fuck. Yeah. It's if you're a dick and problematic, and everybody, you're 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 cooked, you're cooked. You're done. Also, he's like now saying that the narrative is like that he's been planting information and everything Kendrick says is is a lie, which is fucking hilarious to be like, uh, everything's according to plan. Everything is going according to plan. That's also what mm. I'm doing on this podcast, coincidentally. Exactly. I'm planting lies. Everything's going to according to plan. The so entire Park- internet thinks I'm a pa- <laughs> Like, why would Just that- like I wanted them to think. Yes, you're playing <laughs> into my hand. My hand of being a fake pa- I just was lying to see if you would say it. <laughs> it's actually weird that everyone... Now, I was waiting. I thought someone would say something way sooner. Yeah. So, joke's up. Yeah. Up, actually. I but gotta get to my second city general my audition. My general audition. <laughs> well, I'm excited to see what, by the time this comes out, probably there'll be like 17 updates. I know. And so I'm if so something excited. crazy happens that makes something we've said sound insane, you can't hold it against yeah, us. Yeah, this is, what's the date? It's May 9th. May 9th. Okay. Anything that happens after May 9th we're cannot not be held liable. against us. We're not okay. liable. We do not know. We're not liable. We got in trouble before because we made a comment on Ariana Grande before new news came out. <laughs> And it's like, like we could see the future. future. Shall we talk about the aftermath of the Salem witch trials? Yeah. So we're going to have to retread a bit of old ground here just because we're going to go from the first executions to the end of the trials. Just because I'm (sighs) figuring that some people might have skipped a couple eps and I just want to make sure that we really talk about every execution. Yeah, we do like to make this podcast that you can tune in at any point. Without hopefully having too much of repeated information. Yes, exactly. Actually, I didn't include Bridget Bishop. Sorry, girl. (gasps) I know. So we talked about her in the past. She gets executed, whatever. Okay. Then <laughs> it was in the past and she died. Now, let me take you to June 29th to the 30th, 1962. Okay. 1692. <laughs> Thank you. Don't worry. <laughs> so it was Beatlemania. <laughs> Beatlemania. The Beatles had just hit. They crossed they, the Atlantic, they, they baby. They are on the Ed Sullivan show. I know. This is my fucking problem. I'm, I have... <laughs> We talked about how I th- like actually think I have dysnomia. Like dysnomia? I cannot read numbers. I can't remember <laughs> numbers. And even though I'm like okay at math, like doing basic arithmetic in my head. Oh yeah. I can't do it. Like there's no sense of um, reasoning where it's like, even though spelling can be sometimes hard, I understand like the basic reasoning and logic of letters. Yes. I don't with numbers. Like no, okay. uh, you could be like, what's two plus two? And I'd be like, maybe seven. <laughs> like if I'm not thinking about it, you know, like what's my the instincts are again? bad. Oh, exactly. Okay. That's interesting. I know. It's not good. So, 1692, Sarah Good, Elizabeth Howe, Susanna Martin, Rebecca Nurse, and Sarah Wilde are tried for witchcraft, and they are all found guilty and condemned to hanging. Okay. We've talked about this in the women episode, if you really want to go more in depth on the actual trial. Mm -hmm. Um, This was the one that, like, some of the women were, like, screaming at their accusers, and Rebecca Nurse was found innocent and then found guilty again. It's really interesting. It's just we simply can't retread this was that the big, specifically. This was the big one where yeah. they were like, oh, these women will die because they're witches. Yeah, this is the first one. Um, Rebecca Nurse is really seen as, like, a dark spot specifically for the Salem Witch Trials because she was an upstanding citizen that everyone loved. Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh, we're, like, literally, not, like, that saying the other ones deserve to die more or anything like that, but it's, like, if anybody should have gotten out of this, it should have been her. Yeah. And she couldn't because you're basically condemned from the second you walk into the courtroom. That's really too right? bad. And, okay, let me read this name a bit. That song was like in my head, the circus song, by the way. <laughs> Did you? Okay, because a big thing when I was growing up was um, 
I think it was from one of the penguins of Madagascar or like just the Madagascar's movie. <laughs> that's da, 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 a circus. That's da, 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 Afro circus. Afro circus. Afro poke it out, poke it out, poke it out, Afro. Yes. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> really happy we talked about that. <laughs> so the court, the court of Oyer and Terminer is the court that is overseeing the witches. Yeah, the Oyster co- Court. Yeah, Oyster and Terminator is how I read it. Oyster and Terminator. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. So they're being tried by the, co- the court of Oyster and, and Terminator. Terminator. Um, on July 19th, they're all executed by hanging. Aww. Now, this is one of my favorite kind of execution little stories from the Salem Witch Trials, where Sarah Good, who was a... Uh, beggar woman and her, her whose child Dorcas Good was also arrested for witchcraft Dorcas. at four. Okay. Um she's hanged, obviously. Not not Dorcas, uh Sarah. Mm-hmm. And they always have like a clergyman there to basically be like, oh, if you want to like repent at this moment, yeah, like, like do your, it now. your soul can be saved. Yeah. Right? Like maybe not entirely, but you have a chance. Yeah. So the clergyman at this execution's name was Nicholas Noyes. Fake name. That's a DJ name. Nicholas Noyes. So he was a DJ. He works with Drake. Time. Yeah, he works with Drake <laughs> and he is complicit. <laughs> okay. So he's at the gallows basically being like, is there anything you want to say? Like, he's obviously like, any noise you want to make? <laughs> he wants to sample it for his next. <laughs> no, 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 noise. I repent. Pent, pent, pent. I love Nicholas Noise. I love him. So he's like saying, like, do you want to repent? Obviously in like old time. He's saying it not like, do you want to repent? He's saying like, shout the, the whatever, right? To, to, uh, Get over yourself, right? Whatever. And Sarah Good responds to this by saying, if you take away my life, God will give you blood to drink. And years later, when Nicholas Noyes dies, he dies from a hemorrhage like in the mouth and he's bleeding out his mouth. Oh, he hit the beat too hard. That's crazy. It's scary. No, it's crazy. So July 23rd, 1692, a day after my birthday, John Proctor writes a letter from prison asking for the judges to be replaced or for the remaining people to be tried under a different court in Boston because of the court's use of spectral evidence and basically says something. I tried to read the whole letter. It was wordy and in old timey yeah, language no. and I was like I feel as though I'm reading for the first time in my life like you know what I mean where you're like I'm seeing uh, words for the first time ever exactly new word just dropped yeah. what could that possibly mean <laughs> um but basically it's along the lines of like we are condemned from the second in which we walk into the court yes right and he's right for that he is right you know broken clock right twice a day <laughs> So that happens on July 23rd. On August 1st, 1692, Increase Mathers, who was a reverend and Cotton Mattress's father. Okay. I was going to say. Are they, are they related? Are they related? You know, well, you can't be called Increase and not. So, first in- of all. Increase Mattress. Father, father of, of Cotton, Cotton Mattress. Mattress. It is Mathers, but we are going to say Mattress for. It's just better. You know, it is better. To be named, obviously being named Cotton Mattress is insane. It's really too bad. Increase is a wild name. Increase is nuts. That can't, what is that? It's like when you look at your baby and you're like, that baby's too small. I'm going to name it Increase. Increase. What? So Increase Mathers leads a group of Boston ministers and they consider John Proctor's letter. Okay. Right? So they all get together. He's like, let's all get together and really discuss in the court of, not in the court of law, but like in the eyes of God. Yeah. Yeah what is going on with spectral evidence, Uh okay? Because previously they had believed that spectral evidence could be believed because the devil would not impersonate an innocent person. Okay. Which, first of all, girl, the devil does not play by any rules. Yeah, I'm like, where are you getting this (laughs) information? Like the devil- (laughs) What's your source? The devil is evil and can do truly whatever they want. Like, you know (laughs) what I mean? Like what's happening here? But they change their position on the topic and decide that the devil- um, while doing evil, could simply just lie. You know what I mean? And and impersonate innocent people Mm -hmm. and act, like basically become a specter or like a ghost of an innocent person and appear to people and bewitch them, whatever. Yes, I I agree. It's all fake, but you know what I mean? (laughs) No, I agree. (gasps) Okay. So that's on August 1st. Early August, we can't be sure exactly, Philip and Mary English, who we had discussed, I think, a little bit in the woman episode as well, escaped to New York. So Mary had been arrested for witchcraft. I believe she was from Andover or a surrounding town. Okay. Um, And because they were friends with the governor and had connections to like, um, 
like a not like a judge, but you know what I mean, like the person who's yeah. there who does the law, lawyer, not a lawyer, a judge. They're the like court. It's the like jury. He, he's elected. They're elected. Oh, okay. It's a name. There's a name for it. But I'm losing words because I've been smoking so much weed recently. <laughs> the okay, judge. Let me look this up. <laughs> we're not helping. <laughs> Okay, I got it. So excited to hear what this is. <laughs> it's going to be so <laughs> anticlimactic. This is going to be epic. Okay, you want to do one last guess before I tell you? Okay. Um, um, man about town. Town constable. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of, there's like a modern thing that people are because it's like, I was watching like a documentary about Adnan Syed, the guy from Serial. And the reason his appeal for parole was rejected was because there's these positions in the government that are legal that are elected and if you're not tough on crime you don't get reelected. I don't know what the fucking name is but oh. it's something along the lines of like it's not district attorney but it's simp it's something like that. Oh okay okay. I think I know what you're talking about. But it's basically like these people were heavily connected um, in the same way that like Sarah Bishop who uh, like these women would just eventually escape, right? Like yeah. they, somebody would unlock the jail, presumably, because they were connected to a politician or somebody influential and escape. So Philip English and Mary English escaped to New York. Um, and this is at the urging of a Boston minister and Governor Phipps, who was the governor of Massachusetts at the time, was said to be involved in their escape. Okay. Now, Governor Phipps, and this is how I'm assuming you say his name. It's spelled like that. How's but it spelled? P-H-I-P-S. I'd say Phipps. Right, but it's insane. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. So this is still, we're not yet at the American Revolution, right? So Massachusetts is a colony of England. So the governor is an English person, right? Like who is living in Massachusetts and he had to go over and basically be appointed by the crown. So he was gone for many of the months in which the witch trials take place. That's really funny. Getting like appointed governor in England. This and then, is my like very, like one of my favorite facts is coming from all this is that like the, the guy- The governor is The gone. governor was just on vacay. Yeah, talking to the king. Talking to the king, hanging yeah. out, going to luncheons, going exactly. to high tea. And it makes sense when you realize that like all of the governors of these colonies are basically what uh like a- Dignity. Oh my God. Dignitary? I got to stop. Is, that's like, no, you're like the missionary, like the, I'm, I'm elected the missionary to Egypt. Oh yes. Yeah. What's it called? Ambassador. Yes. It's basically, this is going to be impossible to listen to because I'm forgetting all the words, but I'm sorry. <laughs> I just, it's, I'm sleepy and I'm tired and so I've had a hell of a week. Smoking so much weed. My week has been ass as well and not as bad as yours in any way, but. No, no, don't worry. It's fine. <laughs> my brain is not operating I'm sorry. well. I've just been, you know, when you're just crabby. Yeah. I'm very crabby these yeah, days. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that. I feel like that. I had the thought for the first time in a really long time since being on medication last night that I hate my life, which <laughs> usually doesn't happen. <laughs> usually I'm pretty good, but you dark. know what I mean? But I was like, I fucking hate my life. And I don't, but it's when your brain is, you know, No, whatever. but 100%, I really understand what you mean there. So basically like these governors were um, ambassadors, which like yeah. famously ambassadors are just like, rich guys. Yeah, they you know just kind of hang. Yeah, so he's yeah. gone. Um, so he's going to come in later because he's the one that has to shut this shit down, but he's been asleep at the wheel partying in England That's so for a funny. lot of it. Also, full stop, if I was in the past, I would simply be one of those people that did not come to America. Like, you could not pay me to get on a fucking no. sailboat like that. I'm no. sorry. No way. No amount of money would... I, I don't care how bad my life is There's in this Europe. There's a really funny part of my family history where it's like... Some of my ancestors, like not that far back, but they kept doing this thing where like they came from Scotland to New York and then something happened and they got shipped to Ireland. <laughs> and then like something, shipped. yeah. The, like it was not like they're like, we're going back to Ireland. It was like, they were like, you shipped. guys gotta go. Yeah. I think it was that they were like loyalists to the British crown and like the revolution was starting. Fair, And fair. they were just like, you guys have to get out of here you or have you're going to leave. prison. And you know and what? Then, if you're a loyalist to the British crown, there's no better place for you to be than, than Ireland. Ireland. <laughs> yeah. So then they were in Ireland. But like, I, like you can't really tell because like none of this is on record. It's no, just exactly. Like it's just vibes. Yeah. You just hope and that somebody has some heard the point, story. Still during the revolution, they come back to like Boston. They're in Boston, whatever. And again, they get shipped back <laughs> to Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> and then awesome. and this is like over decades so this is like like their kids and then the kids do it again and they just they're going back and forth and back and forth and i'm just wow. kind of like, I'm like what was going on and then at one point they were in prison 
All oh, of them. that checks out. Just Anybody I've met from your family and your whole family's vibe, like this really checks out. You know what I but mean? But this is like the like rich side of my family. No, too. I'm just like, saying, but you, there's just a certain level. It's not a comment on class. It's a comment on just like the innate rowdiness of oh, our family. Yeah, no, for sure. These were like a bunch of Scots. Yeah, drunk coming, Scotsmen. Coming into Boston, picking fights, uh, and then uh, going left, to prison right and, and getting yeah. shipped on the next ship. And then eventually they end up in Canada somehow, but I don't know at what yeah. point. Like, I don't know how long they were back in Scotland. No, my family was all in either in Ireland or Newcastle. Um, <laughs> Newcastle. 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 Um, and then they literally all came over in like the 20s to 60s. Like, and that's a vibe. Like, yeah. I agree. I'm like, when I'm the gonna, ships were better. No, I'm going to wait until the steam engine is invented like, I before like I pop across the Titanic. Titanic. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to get on the wooden boat with sails. I'm going to wait until no. things evolve I a bit. I want there to be a breakfast bar. Exactly. <laughs> when I'm on a boat. Exactly. So it is interesting how it feels like you are kind of the amalgamation of like, you hear stories of your family's past and you're like, Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, and they were still like, they were definitely not like rowdy Irishmen, but they did kill English police officers and they did like, they got into fights and they were murderers, but it just feels (laughs) like they were quiet murder. You know what I mean? They're quiet. Like if I was a murderer, what kind of murderer would I be? That would be me. It's also just like, I'm going to, no, I can't say I'm going to kill Galen Weston on the podcast because what if he gets killed? (laughs) It's May 9th. It's May 9th. <laughs> we can't be held responsible Keep if Galen Weston in, dies. But if Galen Weston dies, owner of Loblaws, <laughs> it's May 9th. I'm looking at my watch as if my watch says May 9th, but it doesn't. It's May 9th. So I'm not going to be held accountable for whatever happens with that or whatever happens and evolves in the Drake Kendrick beef. So yeah. so by your logic, by saying on May 9th, I'm not going to kill him. If he <laughs> dies on May 10th, you can't be held accountable. No. Exactly. Because I'm joking. <laughs> This is like fucking, it's gonna be like Anatomy of a Fall. Like, I'm yeah. gonna get tried and they're gonna read the transcripts aloud from this podcast. You and do it's gonna literally be on have the t- a flight booked for tomorrow, a suspiciously timed flight. <laughs> There's yeah. no way that tonight I'm going out murdering Galen, Galen Weston, Weston and, and then, then getting, getting on a, a flight to Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> to the other side of the country. <laughs> I would never do that. If I was smart, my plane would be going internationally so I couldn't That's be true. extradited. Staying you can, domestic you can is extradite a crazy me. choice. Yeah. yeah, but I I didn't think it through. Yeah. On August 5th, 1692, <laughs> we have to go. We got, this is a timeline. Baby. We gotta go, we gotta go. George Burroughs, the minister. Oh, yes. Martha Carrier, queen of hell. George Jacob <laughs> Sr. John Proctor, Elizabeth Proctor, and John Willard, who was the former, I believe John Willard was the former uh, like constable of Salem, who okay. refused to sign more arrest warrants than was accused of being a witch. Classic. They're all condemned to hang in court, and Elizabeth Proctor is given a temporary stay of execution because she's pregnant. Okay. Queen. Lucky. Lucky. Queen. A petition of 75 citizens of Salem Village sub- are, is submitted on behalf of George Burroughs, but it fails to move the court. Okay. So we see a lot of these. You know, Rebecca Nurse gets it too. Like, there are petitions being like, they're not a witch, but the court doesn't really give a fuck. Yeah, they're sort of like, can we chill on this? And the court's like, mm, but no. we already have the hanging noose yeah, picked but out. The, but the guy, the executioner is really excited about tying yeah, the Yeah, he's noose. really exciting. And he's just like, he's really such a nice guy. And he got excited about it. You should have seen the way his face lit up yeah, when we told him. Yeah, he's like, oh my God, I haven't gotten to hang someone in so long. But it's been a month. It's been a month since I've gotten to hang someone. He's so excited. He's so excited. I just he don't gets don't paid per hanging too, and he's got a family. So it just feels like maybe. We should you know, let him do it. Yeah, we should probably just let him do it. Young, you know, they got to go to college eventually. Yeah, you know, like that's, you got to save up for that. They're starting Harvard soon. <laughs> exactly. On August 19th, ni- uh, 1692, John Proctor, <laughs> George Burroughs, George Jacobs Sr., John Willard, and Martha Carrier are, are all hanged. Bummer. Yep. Elizabeth Proctor remains in jail. George Burroughs recites the entirety of the Lord's Prayer, which we've talked about before hanging himself, which is very punk rock. It was said that it was um, impossible for witches to recite the entirety of the Lord's Prayer. Mm -hmm. And in their examinations, everybody failed to do it because they're under pressure. And also that prayer is fucking hard. Yes. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Ooh, see, now I don't know. Something, something kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. They added that in recently. That's new. They added that That's in new. That's new. It doesn't count. It used to just be, uh, here's what I would say is a... Zig Kyle to the president, gas man, puffed away is your punishment. Pulverize the Eiffel Everyone's Tower. Everyone's moshing. Who criticized your government? Moshing in the town I do hall. all of American Idiot. Yeah. <laughs> the musical. 
<laughs> musical version. So it's like oh, yeah, mus- so I do got- the harmonies. For vibrato in your voice. I beg to dream and differ from the hollow lies. Five seconds of do you summer. Know what song I'm singing, be honest. No, I don't. Wow. I'm not a big Green Day fan. Rob does. Well, yeah. All that, I listened to when I was 14 out. was American <laughs> Idiot and, and the Garden State soundtrack. That's all I listened to. Okay, that's weird. Wow. Right. We need to be running away from you right now. <laughs> that's horrifying, Rob. <laughs> Do you hear the Garden State soundtrack yeah, referenced so in the Garden year of our Lord 2024 yeah. is horrifying. I've never seen Garden State. I watched High Fidelity the other day and I oh. was like, this, I love, I love the High Fidelity reboot with Zoe Kravitz. I think it's like the best reboot I've ever seen in my entire cool. life. It's better than the original and she's fucking amazing. I love her. Um, but they've done a good thing where it's like the character of Rob in the original is like such a man child who's like horrible. Mm-hmm. He's just sucky. But like, it's fun to, like he's sucky in the way it's like fun that he's the main character but yeah. he sucks. But by making it Zoe Kravitz, you're like, I love her. Yeah, she's actually fun. Yeah. All that's to say is I imagine Garden State being very similar of like Manic Pixie Dream Girl and like a guy who loves music. Is that right? Yeah, Rob's nodding. Okay, great. (laughs) Um, The other thing I was going to say is that Five Seconds of Summer covered American Idiot, um, like truly in the year of our Lord 2015. And I think one of them literally said the F slur in it. (laughs) That's awesome. And I love that F slur in American Idiot because it's like... Truly just an example of like a straight person is, no, he's bad. He's bi. Billy, he's, Billy he's, Joe Armstrong? I think he's bi. But it's said in a way of being like, it's a slur, but being like, and I stand with queer people. Do you know what I mean? Like, being oh, like yeah. maybe I am America. Maybe I am the F slur America. What are you going to do about it? Yeah, 100%. It's like such a, ra- I think he's bi actually. Yeah. He seems bi. Like, well, I might yeah. just be that I look at his eyes and I, and I, I'm like, that's a bi I'll man. I'll look it up. I'll look it up. I think but- Rob is. He's bi. Now I'm <laughs> mad at you guys. I think he's bi. <laughs> no, he is bi. Rob's no, but it was at the it. time where it was like when they said the F slur in American Idiot, everyone was like, they were kind of calling themselves the F slur, and everyone was like, oh, activism. That's activism, actually, because you're not saying die F slur. You're saying I am the F slur. Yeah. They're like, so what are you going to say? Oh, to Captain, me? my Captain. Oh, F slur, my F slur. <laughs> my God, you know what I remember? Oh, no, sorry. Rob is primed no, to he, say something. No, he, he came out as bi in 1995, which just Whoa, seems like a big deal. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Huge. Good for him. But go ahead, Blair. Yeah. No, Green Day is cool like that. Um, no, I was gonna say, um, I remember what my favorite SNL sketch is, which is Farewell Mr. Bunting the other day. Okay. Have you seen this one? No. Where they do, uh, they- I a- wish you started the sentence and you just said more cowbell and we have to be like, cool. <laughs> it's it's a really cowbell. popular sketch, Blair, yeah. <laughs> it's the one with, uh, Pete Davidson is in it and I think Fred Armisen and, uh, they're doing, like, Dead Poets Society. Okay. And then <laughs> when Pete Davidson stands on the desk, his head gets chopped up by a ceiling. <laughs> oh, that's really, really funny. <laughs> funny oh my God. that's actually, really really that sounds really really they're all to you splattered after. in blood and they start screaming <laughs> it's, <great. laughs> it's awesome it's so good that sounds that's really I, i'll show funny. it to you because i yeah. completely because someone asked me the other day what my favorite snl sketch was and i was like oh i actually kind of I have like two i don't know okay i have two. First one is it's when Dwayne the rock johnson is hosting and it's like an evil villain get together where they're all trying to invent the most evil robot and one's like this one has a freeze Ray or whatever and then Dwayne the Rock Johnson is like mine kids <laughs> <laughs> and everyone who's like playing a, like a cartoon villain is like oh my god why the fuck oh my god ew no, and they all like hate really it good. and then there's a line there's a joke in that that's like how do you make a robot that m- children and he goes well you m- a robot and you hope the cycle of abuse continues <laughs> It was and really it's good. just got like a funny inner game where Kyle Mooney's in it and Dwayne the Rock Johnson keeps being like this guy gets it and he has to be like no <laughs> no so I really like that one that's and I also really like good. one that's newer it was when Donald Glover was hosting and it, I think it's written by Celeste Yim which is crazy that's cool. from Toronto um and Donald Glover is writing the beanie baby inside like inside the tags mm-hmm. and it's like being like Fuck a fake friend. <laughs> Feeling That's lonely good. today. Oh my and God. And all I want to do is drugs or <laughs> lose myself in the arms of a stranger who will just fuck me and use me like they always do. <laughs> and it's like every and they're like, okay, well, usually we just say like <laughs> Flipper loves to eat lunch or whatever, but it's just at one and forever. It's like so depressing thing of being like, it'll be a picture That's of like good. a little pink giraffe. That's really and, funny. And being like, it's all about found family until it gets hard, huh? <laughs> like stuff like that. I really like that one too. <laughs> That's um, really good. Yeah, I love stuff like that. Okay, moving on. But I'm happy we took a little detour to just talk about our favorite SNL <laughs> sketches. I want to see that that sketch you're talking about. Yeah, I want to see yours very, very too. Funny. Um, I just always remember, how do you make a robot? Ball- 
children. You just <laughs> rest a robot and hope the cycle of abuse continues. You're like, oh Jesus my God. Christ. That's so dark. And it's I think so that's funny. a good example of like, you know, really, really edgy humor that the joke isn't on yeah. victims or whatever. Like the joke is like, that's an evil thing. So if you were really an evil villain, like you would that's do, actually that's, much that's more that's evil than inventing than a, free, a freeze, freeze ray. ray. Yeah, exactly. What's a freeze ray gonna do? Exactly. <laughs> August 20th, 1692, Margaret Jacobs recants her testimony against George Burroughs and her grandfather, George Jacobs Sr., the day after their execution. Okay. So her grandfather was executed and George Burroughs, the minister, was executed the day before and the day after she goes, oh, <laughs> wait, I lied. Oh my God. Yeah. Literally me. I know. I, me I When I write a meme message mm -hmm. in my work group chat, oh, wait, I didn't. Wait, no. no. Oh, awkward turtle. Oh, a turtle, aqua. Awkward turtle. Aqua, tur aqua, aqua, taco. taco. Whoa, jinx. <gasps> aqua, taco. Did you ever do jinx? You owe me a soda, no back magic. I said no take back. No back magic. I mean, like, you can't like take it back. Or yeah. You can't be like, no, you. Back magic is funny. Um, but then you could just respond, the jinx machine is out of order. Please insert another quarter. <laughs> No, I never do that. I say Jinx show me a soda and then just kind no of No take backs or hope whatever. for the yeah. Hope for the soda to be I'd presented the, to you. Hope for the soda. <laughs> just holding on hope. This is kind of just like a nice ask. I'm holding out for a soda. Holding out for a soda, soda to the end, end of the night. Okay, September 9th. Okay. The court sentences Mary Bradbury, Martha Corey, Charles Corey's wife, Mary Eastie, Dorcas Whore. Dorcas <laughs> Whore! Alice Parker and Anne Pudater to hang. We remember Anne, Anne Pudater from fully, surely murdering her husband's and her husband's former wife. <laughs> do you remember this? Anne Pudater. Anne Pudater. Yes. Giles Corey is also there, but refuses to plead either guilty or not guilty cool. in court. Um, and it's, this is seen as making a mockery of the court. So they're mm -hmm. going to, surely they'll react to this in a really chill, normal way. <laughs> surely they won't do anything Press weird. him to death. No. Surely they won't cover him with rocks <laughs> until he dies. <laughs> no, that would be insane. <laughs> That'd be nuts. No you, one would do that, right? Being embarrassed. You're embarrassed. You just maybe be like, oh, I'm taking a lot. You you're know, like, my oh, inner child right now is well, coming well, out. My inner child needs nurturing. What you wouldn't do is press him to death with <laughs> big rocks. Cover him with rocks. Cover him with rocks him until death. he dies. Okay. September 17th. My sister's birthday. Do you remember? The, the 17th, 17th night of September. A bunch of people get convicted. Cool. Rebecca Ames, Abigail Faulkner, Ann Foster, Abigail Hobbs, what Sabrina Abigail's. Carpenter herself. Sabrina Carpenter, no. Mary Lacey, Mary Parker, Wilmot Red, which feels for sure like the name of a cigarette, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm passing another Wilmot Red, me in Montreal. <laughs> I'm driving I'm, anybody, got a, anybody got a Wilmot Red? Anybody got a Wilmot Red? Yeah. Margaret Scott and Samuel Wardwell all get convicted. Um, September 17th to 19th, Giles Corey is slowly pressed to death. That's crazy. So the thing about this is I'm not supporting it. It's really bad and it's crazy. To press people to death with rocks. <laughs> I'm coming out strong against you pressing people to pressing, death. You think that pressing, wow, new stance from Carly, pressing people to death with big rocks is bad. It's bad. Yeah. And I'm being brave saying that. No one else has ever said no that. No one's ever <laughs> said that before. And I'm an activist. Um, but what they were doing was they were basically giving him an option to plead, mm -hmm. right? So it's torture, but they're like, okay, put one heavy rock on you. How mm -hmm. do you plead? Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm not going to plead. So realistically, he probably didn't say anything. He's just like, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. and they pressed him to death slowly over the course of three days. But we know from Arthur Miller kind of narr making it a narrative, yeah. they'd press him to death and he'd just go, more weight. More when they'd weight. ask him, they're like, how do you plead? More and he'd go, more weight. More weight. More because weight. he disagreed with the proceedings. There's also rumors we've talked about before. Yeah. He wanted to in some way protect his inheritance his because land. if you were convicted as a witch, um, if you agreed, if you said, I'm a witch, your property was taken from you. Yeah. But if you didn't say you're a witch and then later convicted of a witch, then your property was also taken from you. Bummer. So he's trying anything. September 22nd, Martha, Martha Corey, Mary Eastie, Alex Parker, Mary Parker, Ann Pudater, Wilmot Red, Margaret Scott, and Samuel Worldwell are hanged for witchcraft. Aww. Abigail Hobbs, not because she admitted to it. Okay. But she's just an right. iconic girl, so you know Yeah, what she's I mean. kind of there. She's, she's in jail, of, but she's, she's not hanged. Jail. Aww. Bummer. Reverend Nicholas Noyce, again. Nicholas Noyce! <laughs> when I met you in the summer. Boom, 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 boom. When the leaves turn. Boom, boom, boom. So that's him. We fell in love. I really, 
That's Calvin Harris, right? Yep. I was not <laughs> expecting to hear Summer by Calvin Harris today, but I'm not mad about it. <laughs> when I started a uh, university and I moved into residence, our like RA or whatever, like the head dorm yeah. person or whatever, her fun fact was that she loved the song Summer by that's Calvin not Harris. Fun. That's not fun. <laughs> and that's not a fact. And she also like, and I will say this, and this is no offense to her, but she was like, I, my passion is going to med school. And then she didn't get into med school and then went to law school instead. So we were like, okay, so you lied. Was it a passion? Or did you just want the money? Yeah. <laughs> Good for her. Good I hope for she, her. I hope she can afford now to go to as many Calvin Harris concerts as, as she, she wants. wants. Reverend Nicholas Noyes officiated again okay. over this hanging and after the execution said, what a sad thing it is to see eight firebrands of hell hanging there. <laughs> Bro, Damn. you cannot torture that information out of me. <laughs> Damn. Oh, uh, it's sad when you see eight firebrands of hell just hanging there. Eight firebrands of hell is crazy. Like, what That's the a good fuck band does name. that even mean? Eight firebrands of hell. That's my new version of six. Eight firebrands of hell? Yeah, eight. We're eight Fire brands of hell. Friend of the podcast, Ben Sosa writes uh, six for his birthday this week. <laughs> and he sent me a bunch of videos from it. Um, <laughs> and it was just him holding up six fingers at the Queens. <laughs> like, I can't do it because I have my, I'll do this. I'll put my mic down to do it. But he was doing, he was doing this. <laughs> like third row. <laughs> like they saw. Six. Six. <laughs> we love so six funny. on the pod. Happy birthday, Ben. Happy birthday, Ben. Okay, Dorcas Hoare is also condemned and executed, and she was supposed to be executed on this day, but she has been granted a temporary stay at the urging of ministers because she said that she wanted to kind of like work with ministers in order to confess to God before her hanging and like save her soul. Mm -hmm. So she's given like a couple weeks, like we'll give her a couple days so she can work with the ministers yeah. to confess. Yes. This is again, Dorcas Hoare of the child robbery ring. Dorcas Hoare. Yeah, so- We if, are all if, Dorcas Hoare. If you're forgetting Dorcas Hoare, has a child <laughs> and the six. robbery ring. Yeah, she used her children to rob people in the town, including the minister. So she's iconic. So I really read this less so as she actually wants <laughs> to confess to she God. Wants... And she's like, I'll scam my way yeah. out of this. She's like, Emma Watson, I want to rob. I want to rob. I want to rob. Oh, I love the bling ring. <laughs> I want to rob. I want to rob. I love Emma Watson. I think she's done a lot for feminism, like in the UN specifically. Dialect yeah. coach girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a dialect yeah, coach it's, it's girl. It's rough. It's rough. <laughs> like, I want to rob. Because <laughs> I was rewatching uh, Little Women, and you're like, it's crazy, like, someone like Saoirse Ronan or whatever, whose, like, accent is way more pronounced than mm -hmm. Emma Watson's, like, posh British accent. Yeah. Is just doing an, an American accent. And yeah. Emma Watson's like, hello. <laughs> and you're like, girl, uh, dialect <laughs> coach. It's not like weird softness too. Like it's, it, yeah. It's like we talked about how a lot of British actors go too hard yes. on the consonants and vowels when they're doing an American accent being like, it's so good to see you. Yeah. And you're so like, good. what? <laughs> hello. That's how Sam Claflin. Like yeah. Sam Claflin's like, all right. And you're like, okay, that's it's, but that's better than just the Br full British round vowels, <laughs> you know, of, of Emma Watson. Exactly. Fame. So at this point, now we're going to October 3rd. Reverend Increase Mathers denounces the court's reliance on spectral evidence publicly. Wait, I have to, you said October, it's October 3rd. On October 3rd, you ask me what, what day, day it is. It's October, it's October 3rd. 3rd. Okay, sorry. Continue. I literally almost wrote that in the, in the Whoa. script. And then you were like, that's probably lame. And then well, I, I thought I might that. remember it the day of, but I didn't. And then October you remember 3rd. it. So you had, you October got me. 3rd. So this is massive because Increase Mathers, Increase Mattress Jesus. himself was, he's a very, very, uh, in the time, like ministers and reverends in general, but he especially was like a very influential figure mm -hmm. coming out against this. Mm -hmm. And when he did this, shortly thereafter, several reverends and ministers followed. Okay. So now the, the court ha is going up against religion Whoa. In, these rich tr in these witch trials. So that's not a good look, okay? Okay. On October 8th, Governor Phipps orders the court to stop using spectral evidence in proceedings. Okay. Okay. It's also worth noting that around this time, his wife is maybe going to get accused. Yes. So he's like, guys, get real. He's panicking. He's like, <laughs> I don't really, I actually, do any of us really believe this? Stop it. Do any of us really think this? Stop it. Anyone? Drop it. I just feel like, <sighs> I feel like we're being a bit dry. We're being a little dry. Uh, we're being a little dry. Uh, uh, uh. So he's like, stop. And then he, on October 12th, writes to the Privy Council in England that he has formally halted the proceedings of the witch trials. Okay. Okay? So he wants it to stop. Mm -hmm. 
On October 18th, 25 citizens write a letter condemning the trials and address it to the governor and the general court. So tides are now turning. Like yeah. oh, truly a couple of months ago in like June and July, Rebecca Nurse is found not guilty and the court explodes so angry that then she's found guilty again. Yeah. But now people are like, a lot of people are hanging. Oh, ridiculous. <laughs> is there this that is many much. witches? Feels like there might not be that many witches. So it's witches. like, how many people could have been in this town? Like that must've been such a like large chunk of the population. That was Bro, like, it's okay, like guys, HPV. Like, it's like so many people have HPV. Have HPV. <laughs> it's like the H- HPV of the 1600s. It was the H- HPV of the 1600s yeah. where it's like, maybe if this many people have it, it's not shameful or bad. Yeah. Just a fact of life. <laughs> All adventurous women do. Exactly. I don't because I got vaccinated. I got vaccinated in middle school. Yeah, that was what I learned. You guys get vaccinated against HPV here and I didn't yeah, that's get that crazy. in America. That is um, crazy. So I had to get it as an adult and loved it. Like, I'm very happy about it because it literally stops cervical cancer, mm-hmm. which is amazing. But fuck those vaccines. They hurt. knocked me out. They, they hurt. Because I'm like kind of girls with the nurses at my doctor's office. Like love, love them. But I was like, she's like, okay, I'm doing it. And I was like, ow, ow, ow. <laughs> and she was like, I know, I know, I know. That's great. I wonder why some vaccines hurt the, more than I others. I think it like burns when it goes in or something. Okay. okay like it actually okay, hurts when sense. it enters your, yeah. that's my theory. I didn't ask because I was too busy going, ow. Because my arm hurt like truly yes. for years yeah. after. Like, and mine's like still a bit Yeah, mine sensitive. is still sensitive. Um, But it was worth it. It's yeah. not like it hurts. It's just like if you grab it yeah you know what i mean um but it also knocked me out for a day like it was yeah. it was crazy brutal so okay october 29th governor phipps forbids any more arrests and dissolves the court of oyer and terminer good so and he begins ordering releases from prisons like people start writing him letters or okay. whatever or people who are influential and kind of have connections appeal to him and he grants them yeah, they're, freedom. they're sort of like, hey, you got to do this. And he's yes. like, okay, fine. But it's not everyone. It's not like he's just been like, everyone needs to be released now, yeah. which would what, be what I would do. That would have made sense. But unfortunately, he's a glorified ambassador. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, and not even to like a country that you need a good ambassador. It's like the equivalent of like the Canadian ambassador to the UK. Like, yeah. just there for a good time. Yeah, you know like, what I mean? Like, not, not doing geopolitical like work. Yeah, sort of like, do you want like a fancy house to just Exactly, it's that vibe. It's not like I'm doing hard work here to make sure that countries get along. It's like, I want to be rich abroad. Yes, I want to be in a different country in my fancy house. That's Governor Phipps. Governor Phipps. So that's at the end of October. November 25th, Governor Governor Phipps establishes a superior court to handle any of the remaining trials of accused witches in Massachusetts. Okay. Um, They have some of the original judges because they're elected judges okay. from the original court. That's but crazy to keep those motherfuckers around. <laughs> oh my God. I know. And also um, some, they have been ordered to not use spectral evidence at a certain point earlier. It's also worth noting that there was one single judge right after the um, trial of Rebecca nurse who resigned because he was like, Whoa. this is fucked. Oh, good. I know. So there are good men in history. It's just, I don't remember their names. <laughs> But so they exist. Uh, ultimately unimportant. Nice guys finish last. To, yeah, truly. Due, due to nice guys finishing last, <laughs> I don't remember his name. Yeah. Um, and that's his fault. And that's his fault. And that's his fault. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Ann Foster is convicted and condemned on September 17th, so a little bit earlier. On December 3rd, she dies in jail. Okay. That's Sorry. rude. <laughs> I know. That's the thing. Ugh. A lot of people died. That was the first. Sarah Osborne died in prison, and she was the first death of the Salem witch trials because mm-hmm. the conditions in jail were so bad. That's awful. Damn. Like the smell, dude. You can't. Uh, even I imagine. can't even imagine. No, no, Re- that's a nightmare. Yeah, Rebecca Ames also petitions the governor for her release, and she states that she only confessed because she had been told by Abigail Hobbs and Mary Lacey that she would be hanged if she did not confess. Okay, so we're beginning to see people being like, "I lied." Because I did not want to get hanged. Yeah. Or, you know, being like, I, like, what is, ha- like, I am not a witch. I, please release me. I lied. Yeah. Right? On December 10th, Dorcas Good, the Dorcas. four-year-old, is released from p- prison after her 50-pound bail was paid. That's crazy. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Why, <laughs> why do you have to bail out a child? Like, I'm sorry. Who's what in just jail? But It's not even juvie. No. It's just, just like you can imagine jail. being in prison as a child, and there's a four year old in the cell next to you. Yeah, that's crazy. And no. then they're like, actually, it's fifty pounds to get her out. 
By the <laughs> like, way, you're like, do you hear yourself? Yeah, it's like, what are you saying? Like, le- just, oh, let her she, free. What do you think she's also? Done? Can she not slip between the bars? That's what I'm saying. I'm like, Jesus. When I was a kid, I feel like I'd really, I could really contort my body to <laughs> to move in any way I needed. You could really to. slip right out of jail. I feel like I could slip out of jail. You know, slip out of jail. Slip out of jail. All right, so that's the end of 1692. Okay. Now we're going to get more vague, not vague, but it's like just kind of like overarching stuff because like the end of the witch trials, it's becoming less concentrated, if that yeah. makes sense, right? And 1692 was really the big year of the witch yes, trials. exactly. So at the beginning of 1693, Cotton Mattress publishes Wonders of the Invisible World. This oh, is a no. book. Not Cotton Mattress <laughs> writing a book, please. I know. <laughs> He's published. This is like book my, launch. This is like Tempur-Pedic. Exactly. <laughs> um, and this is focused it, th- this is like about like a lot of like spectral evidence and stuff like that, but he was also there during the witch trials and um, didn't support the use of spectral okay. evidence. Okay? okay. Also, his father, Increase Mattress, Jesus, <laughs> publishes cases of conscious concerning evil spirits and denounces the use of spectral evidence in the Salem witch trials okay. in the text. Okay? okay, that's good. Rumors circulate at the time that Increase Mattress's wife, Cotton Mattress's mother, was about to be accused of being a witch. Okay. So they're saying, no, guys. No. No, it's not that simple. No. What's her name? I don't know. Okay. Fucking Mrs. Mattress. (laughs) Goody Mattress. Futon. Pull out. (laughs) Pull out mattress. Pull out mattress. (laughs) Air. Futon about air mattress. (laughs) Air to the dirty, mattress. <laughs> dirty mattress. Her name is Bedbug. No. <laughs> Bedbug is a beautiful name for a girl. No one names their kid Bedbug anymore because no. of cancel culture. <laughs> because of cancel culture, people no are too names, afraid. Too afraid to name, name their, their daughters Bedbug. Bedbug. It's sick. Yeah. Will what will the mo- what will the woke mob take next? What will they take next? You can't even name a, a beautiful baby girl Bedbug anymore. <laughs> Anyways, I stand with bed bug mattress. Her name's pregnancy pillow. <laughs> pregnancy pillow mattress. No, you know her name is not a witch. <laughs> her name's cot, cot, cot mattress, cot mattress. Mother waterbed. Cot waterbed. What happened to waterbeds? <laughs> oh no, you're dying. I think they could pop. Oh my God, I'm really choking. Yeah, I think they could popping. And they're just like, oh, okay. What? Holy shit. Sorry. Okay, are you ready? No. <laughs> Let, if you want, there's a, this is one of my favorite names, this next sentence oh, okay, from great. the Salem Witch Trials. Okay, and I want you to excited. guess which one is my favorite out of okay. the four I'm about to read. Okay. On January 1st, a group of people are found not guilty by the Superior Court, who okay. were previously accused of being a witch. Okay. The names include Sarah Buckley, Margaret Jacobs, Rebecca Jacobs, and Job Tookie. <laughs> So it's Buckley, right? <laughs> My Sorry. name is Job Tookie. <laughs> it's like when you have a baby and you're like, uh, they're gonna job tookie my job. Yeah, that baby's a, a an immigrant. <laughs> yeah. They're job tookieing. Job tookie. <laughs> they're taking all of our jobs. So, uh, sorry, why are you guys immigration? We job, job tookie. tookie. <laughs> To know your last name is Tookie. And be, job? It's like T-O-O-K-Y, so it could be Tookie so as funny. well. Tookie? That's not much better. To than know tookie. your last name is Tookie. Tookie? And to be like, probably should name our son Job. Job. Or Job. I guess it could Job. be Job. Job Tookie. Job Tookie. It's bad. No matter which way we spin this, it's a horrible There's simply name. no way to pronounce <laughs> it that is not correct. That's rough. So following this- Can you imagine like- <laughs> Uh, no, I shouldn't even. But can you imagine having sex with Job, job Tookie? Tookie? <laughs> I would lie. I'd say we didn't have sex. <laughs> I'd be like, I couldn't. He have took you my virginity. His name was job <laughs> Tookie. <laughs> he did his job and he took you to my virginity. Awful. <laughs> he took you not very long to finish. <laughs> <laughs> so the charges were dismissed for many others of the accused following this point, right? Okay. Sixteen more are tried. Sixteen more people are tried by this new court. Sixty. 16. 16. Sweet 16. Hold Sweet on to 16, 16 as long as you can. What is that? That's from John Mellencamp or whatever. Oh, okay. We sung we that song like recently. The, well, the way you sang it did not sound like John Little Mellencamp. ditty about Jack and So you're putting me on blast for going to the park yesterday and immediately putting on John <laughs> Mellencamp. <laughs> 
Which is the thing I did. When you give Blair the ox, when you give Blair the ox, <laughs> John Mellencamp is about to be blasted. I get a, I get a lot of like, and I, I do, I, I choose to read them as compliments, but I think they can be seen as backhanded where a lot of people say to me like, you know, I think you've got some of the most diverse music taste. I, I think ever. that's a compliment, but I know and what I'm, you mean. And I'm like, okay, so you hate my vibe. You <laughs> cannot stand me. So 16 more people are tried for witchcraft. 13 are found not guilty. Three are condemned, con convicted and condemned to hang. So what's going on there? Okay. <laughs> After. They're like, just kidding. Yeah. Elizabeth Johnson Jr., Sarah Wardwell, and Mary Post. No one ends up hanging past this point. Like okay. these people do not hang, but they're condemned oh, okay. to hang. I don't they're know what the fuck happened hang. there. Um, it's a fun little twist on yeah. your life. 49 of the accused were released in January. Okay. Because the cases against them had relied on spectral evidence. Mm -hmm. So they're on the streets again. Okay. On January 3rd, 1693, William Staunton orders the execution of the three sentenced to hang. Okay? Okay. He's like, it's happening. We're ordering it now. William Staunton is one of the original judges from the court of Oyster and Terminator. Okay. And he was like one of the main ringleaders of like, I, well, let's hang these people. Yeah. Very much tough on crime. Yeah. And a kind of wrinkle to this is he was up for election soon. And how do you get elected for like judge positions or like, crime position, crime fighting positions is like, it's very commonly known even now to be like tough on crime. Yeah, it's tough on right? crime. Right, so tough on witch crime. He's giving him Reagan. So that's why he's like, let's hang these witches. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, he also orders several others whose executions had not been carried out yet or had been delayed, including those who had been stayed because of the witches being pregnant. Okay. So he's going a little mad. Okay, buddy. Yeah. Someone's bored. But Governor Phipps pardons all those named countering Stoughton's, Stoughton's okay, order. Good. So he's going, good, no, we're not should. doing this. No, this guy was like excited that he got to hang people. Exactly. Something you know? was going on at home. It's like- He's bringing it into the office. Yeah. He was like, he Chekhov gunned it where he was like, yeah. now that I know I can get people hanged. I simply need to. I need to. What I'm not it's gonna- fun. The thing that you don't understand is that it won't be narratively satisfying unless I yes. do what has already been established in Act 1. Yeah, because I kind of already, I've already been doing this. You know what I mean? So like, I can't just stop. Stop now. I can't just stop now. It's be like giving up on myself. No, and you have to dreams. bet on yourself. Bet on uh, yourself. Invest in yourself. Exactly. So after this, Stoughton resigns as judge. Okay. Because he's mad. Okay? <laughs> don't worry. He'll get back. In Men the never change. I know. Exactly. Who took his job? <laughs> I'll give you one guess. <laughs> it's Job Tookie. No, really? No, it's oh, not. I, I don't know who took I his job. I wish Job Tookie Tookie was Job. <laughs> um, on January 27th, 1693, Elizabeth Proctor gives birth to her son, John Proctor III. Okay. They're multiplying. Oh, my God. May 1693, Governor Phipps formally pardons all those still in prison from the Salem witch trials. Okay. They can be released if they pay a fine. Girl, okay. let them go. <laughs> All right. And the trials are formally ended at this point. Okay, okay, that's good. The elections for the general court saw Samuel Sewell and several other of the judges who were really, really hard on crime in the court of Oyster and Terminator get reelected with way more votes. Okay. Because they were hard on crime. So that's just kind of another like wrinkled being like probably the reason these women were all being condemned to hang is because it was an election year. Yeah. You know? That's irritating. I know. It's so, so annoying. Whoa. There's so many parallels with our world now. I know. It's like, damn, it's all about elections. All about elections. Shake it's like the purge. Head. It's like the purge. Is that about elections? There's one that's called like know, purge election, it. I think. Purge election. Purge year? colon election. That's crazy. Remember when the trailer for The Purge came out? Everyone was like, fuck. I know. That was such this a moment. Crazy. They were like, this is the craziest concept I've ever heard. I know. It really. Like, and honestly, like, I love when cool. a new horror movie drops and we're like, okay, a new concept has entered yes. the horror canon. You know, That was big get out energy when yes. get out came out. It exactly. Was like, it that changed really. the game. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Skip forward a year. Okay. November 26th, 1694. Okay. Reverend Samuel Paris, Betty Paris's father. He's still kicking it. I know. Jesus. Betty Paris, one of the main accusers of the Salem witch trials, and he is the reverend of the community at the time, okay, right? Like yes. the town minister, whatever. Yes, yes, yes. Um, he formally apologizes to his congregation for his part in the Salem witch trials. As he should. And many members remain opposed to his ministry there, but that's just because there's, we've talked about this in the in past episodes, the town of Salem was kind of infamous for just like fucking hating their ministers. <laughs> it's like not that interesting. So I think we kind of just like lightly talked no, about it. No, but this is a real thing where they kept kicking them out. Yeah, they kept like 
el- like they would get a new one and then refuse to pay them a livable wage. <laughs> and part of the wage of like, oh, you will get paid X amount from like taxes or whatever yeah. for being the town minister. And also you'll get paid in firewood so you can warm your house. Basically being like utilities are free or whatever. Yeah. Um, but they would like never give them firewood and never pay them on time and just treat them so they shit. They were just mad. They were always mad at their minister. Yeah. So it's a shit job. But many of his members remain opposed to the ministry from this point. Um, probably because he murdered half of the town. Yeah, like fair. But also because they just fucking hate their ministers. <laughs> okay. And that's good. Good for them. Exactly. As is their right. 1695, John Proctor's will is formally accepted in the court, which okay. basically implies that his personhood is restored. Right. Whoa, okay. Because it wouldn't have been accepted before because he was a witch. But he wasn't pardoned until uh, after 9 11. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> after 9 11, he was, he was pardoned. pardoned because we were really reflecting in that time. Exactly. Us Americans. But like he's now based. Yeah, we're like, what else have we done wrong? Yeah, it's like, oh, we should probably pardon the guy from the crucible. Not stop our oil interests in the Middle East. No, probably pardoning and not kind the of guy from the crucible. Par- we should probably pardon the guy from the crucible and not do anything about how much we're kind of ravaging these nations. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So is it implies that his rights have been restored and he is pardoned. Like, it's implying that, but he's not formally pardoned until later, right? Elizabeth Proctor is not included in the will or the settlement. Oh! I know. Um, she begins petitioning for her dowry to be restored at this point because she's going to remarry. Mm-hmm. But because she was a criminal, she doesn't get a dowry. But she's like, I'm not a criminal because I'm not a witch. Can my dowry be restored? Because no one will marry me if I don't have a dowry. <laughs> Imagine having a dowry, by the way. Yeah, Imagine that's crazy. Imagine being like, I'm like, oh, well, probably part of the reason Reese and I are together is because of my sick dowry. Because my dowry. I feel like dowries feel like still sh- very much come into play a lot more than we realize. Like just like your parents being rich or whatever. Yeah, but I feel like there are so formal dowries. In different parts of the world. In different parts of yeah, the world. Yeah, I think in different parts of the world, definitely. But yeah, but I not, do. Not in the, the Western world has really turned away from a formal dowry. From a formal, yeah, There's for definitely sure. the thing of being like, oh, well, I'm rich, so I want to marry somebody else who's rich or whatever. Yeah. Or like the wedding is cra- crazy expensive in its own way, whatever. Yeah. But it's not like, you know, my dad being like, here's five goats yeah. for Carly. Yeah. They just don't I care wish. anymore. I know, he doesn't care. I <laughs> wish I had some goats. I wish I had goats. I wish I had some hackers. Oh, dude, you should. we should just start a farm. I, I feel like really the key to our happiness is we pool together money. Mm-hmm. We start a commune in Northern Ontario where we we have chickens and goats yes. and everything and we farm. I've said this before. I think my dark secret is that I'd be really happy living on a ranch. I really, really feel like that would be good for us. Yeah, I know. I think so. we get That'd so much done. Get so much. We get so many sketches written. <laughs> and that's the important <laughs> thing. I'm like, we need to go off the grid so we can write, write sketch fucking sketches. Comedy. Uh, what I'm saying. Exactly. Okay, so January 14th. 1697. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. 1697 is going to be the best year May yet. Up. How do you think you would make the the glasses for 1697? Like the nine, the circle in the nine and the circle in the six are the glasses. You know what I mean? Like the New Year's glasses, were they? Yeah. Because what's 2024 yeah. going to be? They always find a way. They, <laughs> they always like make find it in like the circle kind of part of the two, <laughs> but it looks fucking crazy i think i do like the six and the nine yeah i think the six and the nine is there yeah and then you have the one on the side and the seven on the other side yeah and that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, yeah the massachusetts general court declares a day of fasting and reflection for the salem witch trials okay so it's like a formal day now where everyone fasts and reflects it's still a puritanical state okay. after all interesting to repent for what's happened <laughs> okay Samuel Sewell, one of the judges of the court of oyer and terminator remember before he got reelected with lots of votes and whatever yes. Um, writes a proclamation and makes a public confession of his guilt being involved. Oh my God. Right? Okay. He sets aside one day a year until his death in 1730. So in like 33 years oh to fast and pray for forgiveness in his part of the trials. Whoa. Which is kind of crazy. It's crazy how all these people just fully admitted to knowing what they were doing was <laughs> like fully fake and wrong. I know. Like, and, they, and like they don't live with it, but they do. Yeah. Like they were just like, oh yeah. Uh, I feel bad about it now. That is, and I kind of knew the whole time. Kind of like an interesting part of like the of being like a Puritan is yeah. so much of it is based on like repentance. Yeah, that like if this happened in modern day, so many people would just be like, no, no, they're witches because yeah. they're like afraid of what it means to admit to themselves about their their part in the trial. Yeah, right for sure. But because their society hinges so much on repentance, repentance that they're yeah. all like, 
Ooh, yeah, like, my bad. Uh-oh. It is interesting. Oopsie daisy. Okay. 1697, Reverend Samuel Paris is forced out of his position as minister of the Salem Village Church. Okay. Good. He lasted pretty long. Good. He's gone. Get There's a, there. They get like a new minister who helps to repair the um the rift in the congregation, okay. but like it's not, you know, That's they're nice. still they're, they're still, still stealing his firewood. Exactly. <laughs> like they're not gonna stop what you're gonna ask a bird not to sing. <laughs> Yeah, he did last kind of a long time too. Yeah. Um, but that's crazy that like, can you imagine all that going down and then just having to go to church the next week? Like, well, that hey. was the whole thing. I know, I know. But that was even the whole thing. Like during the trials, people would be like, uh, like a warrant would go out for their arrest on a Saturday, but it was illegal to arrest somebody on the Sabbath. So then they would just go to church and be like, hey, bitches. But yeah, you thought like, you saw what? the last of me, bitch. That's crazy. I read, I read, I heard that you were talking about me. <laughs> that was what Martha Corey did, which was fucking That's awesome. Nuts. Badass. Church must have been crazy back then. I know. Church well, church was, was like one of the only, there was no oh, yeah. school and yeah. there was no entertainment. So you're going to church. That's nuts. Yeah. Church must have been wilding. I know. So in 1702, the trials are declared to be unlawful by the Massachusetts General Court. Okay. In 1792. Oh, two. Oh, 1702. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. We're okay, not okay. even at yet at 1776. New, New York, York City. City. Hamilton. Me. Are you Aaron Burr? Hamilton sir? and Aaron Burr are not even on the scene yet, girl. Dang, they're not even alive yet. I know. In 1703, the Massachusetts legislature, legislature, got it. Legislator? Yeah, we got there. Legislature. Passes a bill disallowing the use of spectral evidence in all court trials. Okay. The bill also restores citizen rights for John Proctor, Elizabeth Proctor, and Rebecca Nurse, whose petitions have been filed like on their behalf. Okay. Okay? okay. So their like human rights have been restored. They're That's not like nice. seen as witches or whatever. They're okay. not he's not formally pardoned until after 9-11, but like you but know. What he's I mean. like, he's not a witch. We're still mad. <laughs> we still don't like that he wrote that letter. Yeah, we're that was st- a lot. He was I mean pissed off at him because he's just kind of mean exactly like i'm not saying that i'm perfect i'm not and you know me i'm not perfect but i just don't think i would ever do something well that's what i'm saying you know me and you know my heart yeah and like i would just kind of trust the process yeah it's kind of like when god's we said that you were a witch and then instead of just saying like hey i'll hear you out you wrote a really mean a mean letter it was mean uh that made me feel bad and embarrassed i was really embarrassed and and i i felt attacked and triggered Upset. It triggered me, and I had to deal with that triggering for three to seven days. Because the body keeps score. Because the body keeps the score. I had to do some hip flexor exercises and going, to get ah. that trauma out. Yeah, I had to. S- I see that a lot of my Instagram people being like, because my Instagram has correctly sussed out, and they're like, here's how to repair your nervous system. <laughs> and they say, like, do that a lot. I've been like, ah. And I'm like, honestly, it feels good. I have to set up my phone camera and watch me. Like, have you ever seen that girl who made that video where it's like, watch me go through the most triggering breakup? <laughs> yes. And it's like her, she sets up a phone camera and then just like sits on her bed and like shakes around. I'm like, I know, that's crazy. Like, girl, don't set up the why phone are, camera. Why are we setting up the we tripod We need to know less that. about each other. Yeah. On August 25th, 1706, Ann Putnam Jr., main ac- accuser of the Salem Witch Trials yes. and known turf. Probably. Friend of rolling. A friend of rolling, if you will. <laughs> is formally joining the Salem Village Church because she's like of age now. Okay. And while she is doing this, she formally and publicly apologizes for, and I quote, <gasps> for the accusing of several positions of a grievous crime whereby their lives were taken away from them who I now have just grounds and good reason to believe they were innocent persons. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. I mean, in her defense, she was a child and nobody should have believed her. <laughs> yeah. But also, that's nuts. like, this is what I'm saying. Everyone's just That's like being nuts. like, my bad. Yeah, like, oops. Sully. Oh, so crazy. Sully. That's nuts. Mm-hmm. No, and her apology too was crazy too, where she was like, actually, I thought that like the witches were possessed by the devil, but actually I was possessed by yes! the devil. Yes. Like she like fully Uno reversed them for kind of like for nothing. <laughs> no, I know. It's crazy. In 1708, Salem Village finally gets its first schoolhouse. Oh, my God. Which I think will be good for the population at large, because if the children are at school... Yeah, they can they m- stop accusing people of witches. I think that they'll be less bored, and they'll stop accusing people of being witches. Dude, these kids needed Sesame Street they so They needed bad. Arthur. They needed educational television like no one I've ever seen. No one had ever seen the need yeah. until this point. The need for speed. The need for th- need. 
Rithneet. Okay, Laura. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, Laura. Okay, calm down, the Needler. Needler. What's his name? The Needler? I think something like that. Needler? I don't know. Who cares? Who cares? 1710, Elizabeth Proctor is paid 578 pounds and 12 shillings in restitution for her husband's death. Okay. She'd also remarried. She's remarried, living her best life. That's kind of epic. Yeah, happy for her. That's my dream that someone just one day drops off like a ton of money and is like, oh, this is for you. From Bye. something you forgot about. That's exactly. every woman's dream. It's the equivalent of finding out you have a tax-free savings account yes. you didn't know about. That's epic. For $8,000. Okay, huge. That would be amazing. That's great. Huge. 1711, the province of Massachusetts Bay restores rights to all accused in the 1692 witch trials. Okay? Cool. Also, so, so the legislature also compensates the heirs of 23 of those convicted. So that means that okay. like because their good their family was like disinherited because they were witches, yeah. they now get compensated. One of the largest settlements goes to William Good for his wife Sarah. Oh, good. And for good. their da- daughter Dorcas, who was imprisoned at four or five years old. He said that the imprisonment of Dorcas had ruined her and that she had been no good after that. She went insane. Basically. Okay, so fair. Honestly, like Definitely. what why are you imprisoning a four-year-old? Not gonna do good for her mental That's health. That's so freaking. I don't dark. think she's gonna thrive at that. No, point. for no. sure not. Um she's body keeping the score. <laughs> she's body keeping the score for life. Like, come on, let's be so real. That's 1736. Horrible. 1736. <laughs> England and Scotland abolished witchcraft prosecution. Okay. Period. Good. Now we're jumping ahead a little bit, okay? Okay. 1952. <laughs> <laughs> So, Just a little bit. 1952. 200 years and 50 years as well, give or take. Arthur Miller writes The Crucible. Okay. Have a whole episode on that. Love that episode. Love the if episode. Love more Crucible. about that, all of that. 1957, Massachusetts formally and publicly apologizes for the trial. Whoa. The remaining accused who had not been previously legally exonerated are included in an act in Massachusetts clearing their names. Whoa. Only Ann Pudator is mentioned explicitly, <laughs> but <laughs> for some fucking okay. reason, full murderer, but we love her nonetheless. Yeah, like, for sure, for sure. The for sure, act- she had like an ancestor there. <laughs> who was like, actually, we don't know for sure. Yeah. And actually, Mr. Pudator's first wife was a drunk. Yeah, so And actually, delirious, so we're happy she, she died. She the better one. So actually, good for her. Good for her. The act also exonerates Bridget Bishop, Susanna Martin, Alice Parker, Wilmot Red, and Margaret Scott. Whoa. They're not okay. formally mentioned, but they're all, now everybody is formally but exonerated. But they're in it. They're in the mix. Yeah. The little mix. They're in the little mix. They're in the little mix. Salute. Ladies all across the world, listen up, we're looking for recruits. A, ladies, get your sneakers, heels, something on, or lace up your boots. Do you know that part real. of the song? That's real. Which one are you? I want to be a Perry because she dated Zane, but mm. I also like the one that went, hi there, Athlete. When she did the genetic. You know, flag. Yeah, flag. <laughs> flag. I think, is she racist? One of them's racist. No, so, okay. Because one of them was racist to Jade. Okay. I don't know much about She's the, the one that left. Lore. So I think that actually that one is racist. Who's the one who left? The one who went, Milad. Apparently that wasn't her doing a Jamaican accent. That was like a sound that they were making throughout the clip. Oh, no, she's not racist because of that. She's racist for other stuff. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm not saying I'm making a big swing on that. Okay. <laughs> she's racist for other stuff. She's racist for anyway. other stuff. But I have, I don't have, watch a video essay. Surely someone's made a great video Someone's made video a video essay. essay. Someone's always made a video essay. That's, and that's what's what, wonderful that's about what the internet. That's what's beautiful about the internet. The internet is if you so want to learn about anything, way. you want to learn about Little Mix. There's a video essay, a video about, essay that. about that. There's and a video and essay about that. And if there isn't, that. I'll make it. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. October 31st, 2001, the country is reeling from 9 11. Mm hmm. And the governor of Massachusetts signs a resolution formally clearing the names of all those accused in the Salem witch trials. Good. That's the aftermath. Whoa. Yeah, baby. That's and then we make this podcast. And that's the real, the real aftermath is going to be this fucking podcast. This fucking baby. podcast, baby. So that's that. Um, wow. That's so interesting. Yeah. It's interesting how many different ways they kind of apologize in the aftermath yeah. of it all. Um, especially because I feel like when you see like representations of the Salem witch trials in media, they kind of basically just like, en- like they don't focus on the ending because the ending is so like no. long and petering that it's not interesting television or movie or whatever. For sure. But it just kind of like slowly ends over the course of a cup. Like nobody's yeah. dying, but they're still imprisoned and then they're freed. You know what I mean? 100%. And it's so interesting too that it's like, oh, like they for sure were still feeling such a large amount of shame about it. 
That they never at one point came out and were like, we were fully just wrong. Yeah, they were like, the devil was there. Yeah, like we were wrong about <laughs> spectral evidence. Okay, well, actually, like, we shall not accuse witches at all anymore. It's and also, like, now yeah. we're giving money to the heirs. Like, really? Like, it's it tells you a lot about, like, how, honestly, the justice system operates. <laughs> I know. It's always been bad. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's dark. Dark as hell. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready? Okay, let's freaking go. Let's make this tragedy about us. That's right. It's a time in the episode where the only segment we have happens. And yes, that segment I love segment. Is, <laughs> we love the segment. We love the segment. Um, and that segment is where we take this horrible tragedy and we make it about us, baby. Because every rose has a thorn. Every rose has a thorn. Okay, um, that was the opposite of okay. what I meant, actually. Every thorn, thorn has, has its rose. rose. Okay, so I had originally written for this that okay. how would you apologize for your for the Salem witch trials? Okay, but I think what's better is um like like really really map out how you could actually apologize for condemning women for to their death. Okay, in a way that would be accepted in this. Uh, am I um, in modern like, day? I'm, oh, right now. Okay, so I'm just like me, and I've condemned women to death. In the Salem Witch Trials, but it's, but it's modern trials. day sensibility. It's kind of like fan fiction rules. Okay, where like, okay. No matter what time period this is taking place in, everybody has the social justice knowledge of 2024. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And I'm in this scenario, I have I been one of the girls who are accusing or have I been one of the people in the court? You're one of the girls. Okay, I'm one of the gr girls. Okay, so I think that I would, um, like one day I'd be like, oh shit, you know, they're really turning the tides. Yeah. And then one morning I wake up and I go, whoa. Oh, where am I? <laughs> and I do like a big like, wait, is this my house? I haven't seen this place since I was, I feel like I was younger <gasps> then. And I pretend I've had like amnesia. Whoa. Like waking amnesia for the last like seven years. So people can't. So they can't. And so they'll they say like, what happened when you accused the witches? And I'd be like, what's a witch? <gasps> what's a witch? She doesn't even know what a witch and is. And then they're like, they're women possessed by the devil. They're like, Women possessed by the devils? Why, that can't be true. <gasps> I would never believe something like this happening to me. That's really good. And then I'd invent, like, I'd go to whatever library I have at my disposal, it's and I'd the, find yeah. a disease. And then I'd be like, I have this disease. And I just woke up and I had and no And Leah memories. Michelle, the illiterate doctor, as yeah, we know, exactly, would, be would, like, would agree. The she, they're like, I can't read. So yeah. surely that's fine. So I do the amnesia thing. I'd be the like, oh my God, I can't believe I thought this was all a horrible dream. Yeah. Um, and then like it slowly comes back to me in pieces. I think I personally would weaponize social justice language. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> to make it seem as though in some way, like, you know, like it's the same thing when like, so I've been doing research for this video I was doing about how John Green got kind of run off Tumblr. <laughs> and it. really, it's that kind of thing that happens a lot on social media. And I don't want to use the word cancel because I feel like that word has gotten like no meaning now. Again, it's like it's used for people that like have genuinely done actually bad things that need to be held yes. accountable. I mean something where people just decide they don't like someone, but they don't, they can't say that. So they have to create some kind of like moral reason why the person is bad. Do you know yes, what I mean? For sure. So that's kind of what I would do, mm -hmm. where I would be like, no, 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 I'm not lying. Those women might not have been witches, but they were, bad. But they were problematic. Like you should have oh, seen yeah. the way that they talked about, and then I would figure out kind of like whatever. Kind See, of, they were wearing indigenous headdresses. Exactly, and they were, they were culturally appropriating. I would yeah. talk to your fave is problematic, the Tumblr, anonymous oh, Tumblr blog, and I would get them to release a post about all the problematic things that have been done that, by that these women. Done by the, like yeah. Ampudator, like literally, literally killed, killed someone. Killed someone. She Matthew Broderick someone. Exactly. And we Dorcas never about whore. It. Was a dork and a whore. Was a dork and a whore with a child robbery ring. Yeah. So stuff like that. Where it's like, and then the situation gets so muddled that people get confused by it that it's like, maybe I'm not completely absolved in the way that your amnesia fantasy is, mm -hmm. but I've I've watered it down and made it so confusing that people don't know what to say. Yeah. Much like the woman who ran. Your fave is problematic. Exactly. Who just put out a think piece recently about I know, it. It was I, really interesting. Yeah, I, I, was, I read that. It was that. really interesting. Yeah, she ran like this anonymous blog where she would make compilations of like, it'd be like, uh, it'd be hyperlinked, right? Because it's Tumblr and it'd be like, Mindy Kaling, you'd click on it, it'd be a list of everything problematic yeah. that Mindy Kaling has ever said or done linked. Yeah. Um, And was that good for the culture? Well, I it, don't it know. It conflated celebrities putting their feet in their mouth with like actual 
like murderers. <laughs> yeah, that Which, was. That. I don't know if that was good. No, because I, now we do talk about those things like they're like when the Try Guys guy got canceled. Yeah, because he treated cheat treated. He did not treat his wife. He cheated on his wife. Yeah, and people were talking about it like he killed someone. I was like, okay, cheating's not good, but like. This is We've got to draw lines. This somewhere. is the Ariana Grande of it all. I'm like, yeah. yeah, cheating is bad, but like, it doesn't mean somebody should like be publicly like shamed, and shamed for humiliated. life. Yeah, it's it's insane. Like, yeah, maybe like a slap on the wrist because that's not a great thing to do. But like. Oh my God, it's different than the big crimes that I don't want to say because we've said a lot of big crimes. We've said a lot of big crimes but, on today's episode. Yeah. But yeah, exactly. And I think also like, because I was researching your fave is problematic because of this John Green video I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And like some of the stuff was genuinely like, okay, like this is something that like, which by the way, we should get John Green on the podcast. John Green, uh, come on, girl, <laughs> the story. I podcast. actually think that John Green would fuck with this That's podcast. That's what I'm fucking saying. No, John Green, I actually think, I actually, I think we're your niche maybe. Because he follows Uber and Clunk on TikTok. That's huge. I can't believe you don't have a t-shirt with that written on it. I know. It was the best day of my fucking life. I was in an Aritzia dressing room and I screamed. <laughs> so I'm making this video partly because somebody asked me to, but partly because it's my fucking green light on the end of my motherfucking Doc J. Gatsby style. Yeah. To get John Green. It's my green light for John Green. John Green. To get him on the fucking podcast. John Green, I actually think you'd like this podcast. That's John what I'm Green, saying. come on. You can talk about anything you want. You can talk about anything you want. You, you can talk, talk about tuberculosis. tuberculosis. You love tuberculosis. <laughs> you love, well, you hate it. No, but like you love but the you advocacy. Love, you love the advocacy of you it. You love all. the advocacy of it all. John Green, come on the podcast. And here's the thing about pain it demands to be felt. And that's some facts. And that's I, feels. I like to eat my cigarettes raw. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I do. You should write, do, I wish you had a pack of cigarettes right now. We actually, I wish we had a pack of cigarettes right now so we could eat them for John Green. Exactly. Um, it's a ever, metaphor, you see, you put the killing thing between your lips, but you don't give it the power to kill you. Through I did in Montreal this, 14 <laughs> times in one night. You gave the actually. killing, you did give the killing I, thing the power to I kill gave, you. I gave the, because I had a, one vodka soda and I was like, it's time to give the killing thing the power to kill me <laughs> 14 times in a row with but, some French people I just met. So anyways, John Green, come on the fucking podcast. John Green, have I ever told you, uh, guys, about the the time that I was doing children's theater and one of our children's theater uh, members had bronchitis. And um, so one of the other members of the children's theater troupe went to the administrator who was this old woman and was like, yeah, like he's really sick. He's got tuberculosis. <laughs> and so they like call him into this meeting and they're like, hey, like, should you, are, you okay to, to, like, <laughs> are you okay to keep working? Like, and he was like, oh no, like I'm, I'm really sick, but I'll be better. And they were like, well, like you have tuberculosis. He was like, no, I have bronchitis. <laughs> I, did I ever tell you that the janitor at my elementary school had tuberculosis? Oh, my God. They had to send an email to everyone being like, hey. It's tuberculosis. You have tuberculosis. That's you have crazy. And then everyone, my mom was like, what? Why? He's fine. Okay. It's incredibly curable. This is the John Green advocacy of it all. Tuberculosis is like an incredibly, it's an incredibly deadly disease that is 100% curable. It's just that the medicine is incredibly hard to get it's in crazy. different parts of the world. It's insane. And John, John Green. Green Come, come on the podcast. On the podcast. Come on the podcast. Our our niche niches. We've abandoned Rachel Ziegler. She's gotten too famous. She's gotten too famous. She's on Broadway now. She's on so Broadway. She's done the Hunger Games. We're Rachel on Ziegler. to John Green. We're on to John Green. John Green. Hank Green. Uh, you know, <laughs> we love Hank Green. It's less your niche. It is less his niche. We're not about talking about science. And I think no, also in general, love science. what's really interesting is like, this is how I feel. It's like I, I'm on the internet now and I feel fucking old because I've been chronically online for truly decades of my life. Oh, yeah. Um, and people are like, oh, my God, did you know that Hank Green's brother wrote The Fault in Our Stars? I'm like, yes. And I was like, first of all, don't fucking call John Green Hank, Hank Green's, Green's brother. brother is crazy it's to crazy. me. It's crazy. It's crazy to me. And we love Hank Green. No, you love, read Hank love, Green's books. Love Hank Green. We love I read one of them. <laughs> <laughs> we love Hank Green. It's just that John Green's niche is here. We're active, like, what do we have to do? Do we have to post John this Green. on the Uber and Clon TikTok that you follow? What, and also, John Green, <laughs> what appealed to you about that sketch comedy? <laughs> hey, don't try to unravel the mysteries what? of his mind. I know. I want to, though. I love him. John I figured out through doing that video that I, like, literally have an encyclopedic knowledge of those books. Like, I could tell you at the drop of the hat every single John Green book chronologically and also what they're about Good. and if they were co-authored who they were with. Good. John Green. Do you know that Willem Dafoe was in the Fault in Our Stars movie? Because I forgot about that. I can't remember the Fault in Our Stars movie. Other he than... plays like Peter Van Houten, the like. Oh my God. The author. Yeah. It's Willem Dafoe, which I forgot That's about. That's awesome. And Laura Dern's the mother. 
Oh my god! And I Mike need to rewatch no, this. No, I feel the same. We should watch it together. Oh, we really should. That Mike so Birbiglia plays the like lead of the cancer support group with one ball who plays good. It's really funny. It makes sense because he's a comedian. That's awesome. But he like plays it so straight <laughs> that it's really funny. Where That's he just awesome. talk, he's like, and God took my one ball. <laughs> That's got to be hard. Those movies are funny. Like the book is funny though. Like because the, the whole thing is he keeps being like we're meeting here in the literal heart of Jesus. Well, and everyone's like, "Well, it's not the the literal heart." This is the thing where like whenever people try and like yap 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 about like what's wrong with John Green's books, I'm like, "You're actually lying. You're literally lying." You're to yourself. lying. You're literally lying. Because tell to me yourself. you did not read The Fault in Our Stars. Like that book is fully artistically good. It's funny, so good. well written, and it's touching. Touching. It's touching. I mean, I was a Paper Towns girl. I, but The Fault in Our Stars, you cannot argue with so good with the masses on that one. I know. I Actually, I really fucked with Will Grace and Will Grace. And Honestly, weirdly. that checks out to me. I know. Because it's kind of <laughs> just about music. But yes, I love the YA of the early 2010s. John Green, get your ass on this podcast. John Green. What are you doing? You should make this into a reel. John Green? Oh, and yeah. This is quotes, and then we'll tag him. This is real And then if we really need to, content. I'll post it on <laughs> the Uber Clock <laughs> the Instagram. The Uber Clock Instagram page. <laughs> so I know it's getting in his following. Yeah, 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 yeah. John Green. John Green? John Green. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's it. Okay. Before we go, we have to read the Patreon subscribers who, have, who are Salem bitches. Salem bitches. All right. So thank you so much for being a Patreon. Rebecca Arndt. Reginald, like share one name, and Tony Boney. Thank you so much. If you want to join the Patreon, uh, we got more stuff coming there. We post other stuff, early stuff. It's fun. It's a good time. Um, also, please follow our Instagram. And if anybody here has a connection to John Green, please, you have a moral obligation to email us. We or need if you are John fact, Green. If you are John Green, the fact that we have not had a famous person on this podcast is insane. It's exhausting. Oh and my the thing God, is, like, what's so kind of tiring. funny about this, speaking of your fame is problematic, if you don't come on a podcast You're that actually platforms problematic. two female voices in comedy and history, you're problematic. You make the connection there. You're problematic. You're a misogynist. You're a misogynist. I don't care how much you want to eradicate tuberculosis worldwide. You're, two things can be true. Two things can be true. Once, Come on the John podcast. Green. Come on the podcast. We love you. Come on the podcast, John Green. Even though, uh, doesn't he, he always gets in trouble when he goes to Canada. I know this. Why? Because he once tried to come to Canada with not enough money, which mm. I didn't realize was a thing you that need, they check. You need money? I never thought you did, but yeah, they told him. You know what? He tells it better. So you can come <laughs> on the podcast and, and tell the, the John Green. story. But thank you as always for engaging with us. We love you so much. And we're so excited to get to announce what we have in store. Oh, babe, you better watch this space. The exciting stuff that we have to announce, you're going to lose your mind. It's actually like, I know when people say that sounds like a lie, but, but I, this is good. we actually are sitting on some fun stuff. Some fun up. stuff. Some fun big, stuff coming up. Big things soon. Let's just say big, that. Big things pretty soon, actually. Like very soon. Like soon. Like I hate when people online are like, I'm working on a project. In the next week or so, you'll know. Yeah, you'll you'll know. There's stuff coming. Probably it will have been announced by the time you're listening to this and you're going to be like, yeah, girl, we know. Yeah, girl, we know. But just in case. Okay. Just, just in case. Anyways. Bye. Bye. Love you. Bye.